Yeah, yeah. Okay, so welcome to Launceston for the third day of the first nine and the second day of the second eight. Um, we have a bit of a preamble while they warm up. We didn't, haven't done that before because we've been tech challenged. I'm still tech challenged this morning because we've got the scoreboard up and running, but I can't get it to update, so I'll be asking Jamie what I'm doing wrong shortly. Uh, anyway, where we are in the competition. In the first nine, we've got Robert undefeated uh, with four wins. Now, because there's a buy in that block, um, there is a little bit of skewing of the results. But equal, second, third, and fourth are Gary, Malcolm, and Pete. But they've all lost two games. So chances of them catching Robert are pretty remote unless uh, Robert slips up big time. So more than likely there's a, a blanket field playing for second place. In the second eight, we've got one day play down. So they're a little bit behind the, the first nine, which started a day early. So we've got Barry Hayden and Phil Roach, both undefeated after yesterday. And, and we've got Kevin McGlynn and Janine McCarty on two out of three. And then... Brett and David with just one each and Mary and Graham have not won a game as a match as yet um, of course that can all change but once you've lost three matches you're pretty much out of it so the ones at the bottom are probably just here to um, spoil the party for other people, they're, they're the king makers if you like um, the other eights are all at Can Lee Andy Barbero is leading in the third eight, the only one who's currently undefeated. Yeah, fourth eight, we've got um, a bit of a slower day by the look of it, with some incomplete um, third matches. But at the moment we've got Greg Berry and Michael Trefusis Painter of Western Australia, both undefeated, but they're playing each other in the match that's not completed, and they're game all. Uh, Damien Hadfield is sitting there with two and one, so he's doing all right. And then because they're behind a little bit, we've got. Oh, yes. We've just got to speak to Jamie for a second. Alright, technical glitch may be solved if I move a bit faster. <laughs> Which I'm not because I'm talking. <laughs> Fifth date, we've got Bill Mainwaring in front, but again, that's early days. Uh, and the sixth uh, group, which is a four, because we've had quite a few people seem to have managed to injure themselves and had to withdraw, has uh, Jenny Rector from Como and WA, relatively new to the big time. Uh, winning both her matches yesterday and uh, I think they were from memory no, they were only playing two a day so uh, so that they were finished for the day and they'll be playing two today and two on uh, Sunday so still all to play for except maybe in the first nine where Robert may already be far enough in front anyway further update shortly
Okay, so we're we've kicked off in game one. We're covering um, Jamie Gumbrell versus Chris McWhirter on show court today. To start with, um, obviously a best of three. First game beginning. We've got um, Jamie playing blue and black. Chris with red and yellow. As you can see, the four balls are across. Blue is pretty good. Uh, red was short. Black was short. Yellow's come in. Not blocking. Okay, so Blue's taken on the hoop with a fair bit of speed. Caught a bit of leg, spun and stayed in the jaws. Not too bad an outcome. Uh, yellow, as it stands, is confronted with a Quite an angry jump shot. Um, so red has options of the obvious one is clear black, um, and have to take on that angry jump shot. Or could could have perhaps tried to promote yellow, but then black would probably hit it. So we've gone for the snuggle uh, with red on black, which is powerful if you can get it, um, and looks like it's been good enough. just played to position and yellow is taking on the jump shot Great shot. A really nice jump shot from the angle. That's vintage Chris McGuida right there. And he's managed to steal the first two. Now, just wait for Jamie to play this. So, best Jamie can do with blue is get up nice and straight towards um, second hoop, but the slope on the line's taken a little bit right. Not too bad. And we've got a bit of music drifting in from behind us somewhere. You probably can't hear it on this microphone because there's a fairly limited range on the mic. <coughs> You'll hear me talking to the cameraman from time, or him talking to me from time to time, but he doesn't probably realise that the mic doesn't pick up very well what he's actually saying because the, it's a limited range. Um, but still, um, I'll, I'll answer him if he talks to me. So. The red's drifted out to the right as well. Black is nice and straight, but a reasonable distance back, more than four yards. And yellow has come in the gap, but it'll drift away to the right. Um, weather today is much colder, uh, but promises to warm up a little. And the cloud is supposed to burn off, and uh, there is supposed to be more wind today, which the groundsman is not happy about because it blows a lot of um, leaves and gum nuts off the nearby trees onto the courts mainly onto court 2 which we're not using so that's handy Jamie's cleared red some distance away and held a position with blue that's not anything more than controlling and we also have apparently got a major statewide Tasmanian relay event happening um, on the athletics track just behind us uh, starting about 10 o'clock today and going forever basically it's some sort of that's a brilliant shot there by red clear black from the other side of the lawn again vintage Chris um, yes yeah, so going back this is a, a big relay starting there will apparently will be lots of noise all day and into tomorrow it's uh, one of those marathon ones where they're trying to make some sort of record and teams and people will be running around and around and around in circles for a very long time. It's cold enough that uh, Barry Jennings is wearing a beanie on the uh, adjoining lawn. So Black's come back in and Chris, although he's not 100% happy with the shot, has moved it. 
deflected off himself with yellow. I did update the score, but I see it hasn't updated in the corner of the screen, so uh, again, I'm not sure if there's something happening there I've done incorrectly. Anyway, we'll see. So blue's come in, red's come in and snuggled again. Black has, I think, attempted to free blue up from the snuggle and has missed to the right side. Again, that slope on the lawn may have come into play. Chris doesn't look unhappy with where uh, red is sitting. Snuggling blue. So I suspect we'll just see yellow come in here. Um, and if he wants to get in front of the hoop, he needs to allow for a little bit of that um, left-right turn as he comes in and aim a little bit left of the hoop. Okay, um, Yellow decided it was going to hit the two balls and free them up for some reason, and has certainly done that. He's, he's spanked red into blue, blue's gone to the boundary, yellow's gone over near hoop three, and red has kicked out wide of hoop two. And this is going to allow Jamie to come in and take control again. No, it's, well, it wasn't me, well, wouldn't have been my preferred choice, but I'm, um, sometimes Chris likes to hit balls to get into form. Yeah. Yeah, he certainly is uh, pretty much hitting everything so far. Um, maybe not so balling everything, but he's um, played red and hit blue. Jamie's brought Black into a much better position. He might, he, oh, I don't know, he might bring this one in though just to, uh, yep, generate a bit of pressure. He's willing it on and it's not listening. So. Black has got blue covered, I think. Yeah, Black, yeah, blue, blue is not running from there, Black's in the way, but um, it's just two, it's, oh, I was going to say probably two runners, but it looks like Blue has tried to block red at black as well oh well there's a long delay in the scoreboard updating but it's just done it so um, Chris and I know each other pretty well uh, been playing croquet together and against each other for a very long time, AC uh, initially and then GC. Uh, Chris is the only Australian um, player who has played in every state team event in golf croquet. So, yep, yeah, yeah, it's a good record to have and, and, he's, and he hasn't been shabby in performance during that time either. Um, bit shabby in that shot though. He's, red has hit blue and cut it to the jaws of hoop two. It hit the leg and bounced, so I don't think it's on the leg. It's it's stopping black from running, but obviously um, yellow has to do something about it, and yellow will probably be a reasonable distance away uh, when Jamie clears it. Now Jamie is an exceptionally good um, hitter of the ball, but not a powerful hitter of the ball. So Jamie will centre ball um, a lot and clear balls a distance, but not as far as the stronger players usually do, but certainly more than enough to put you under enough pressure that you're going to hit a uh, miss of high percentage coming back. This is 
probably a cornerstone of how Jamie won the Women's Worlds was that uh, almost metronomic um, ability to just keep hitting centre ball and keep hitting balls far enough away uh, to put pressure on the opponent constantly. So calling a referee to watch this because this is quite angly. Interesting choice of positioning by the referee. And deciding just to jaws, which is probably quite sensible. Red's giving up and going to the halfway point. So the, the format for today, we've got um, two rounds of best of three matches in both blocks. The top block is using five, six, seven and eight as they did on Thursday. And the other half are using uh, one, three and four with some double banking. Um, and then they have not played on those courts before in this event so that's their first time over that side of the uh, of the venue although they did get um, the use of courts one and two on practice day we, weather yesterday was quite warm for Tasmanian standards uh, and the phone that we are using for the internet actually overheated uh, and shut everything down fortunately about exactly the moment that Barry Hayden ran the winning hoop in the last game of the day that we were covering it couldn't have timed it better so Jamie's looking at this very very closely here I'm guessing trying to find the exact spot to perhaps run blue to to have a promotion to the next two with black from from black or maybe not okay, just hit it through why not scores updating much quicker now that's good One all. Yeah, you haven't missed much. There's a, there's a chair right there. Pop yourself down. Yeah, and you get you'll get the benefit of the commentary and everything. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Red's come across to three in beautiful position, and Black has kind of matched it. So the, uh, the secondary players on lawn three are just leaving us because they're able to get out and start. So we're covering court five again as we have for the last two days. So today's game has obviously Chris and Jamie to now. We don't know who will be coming on in the next round at this time. But we hope that the, th the one match that's the catch up for Torben um, in the one third round match today will, will be Malcolm and Torben on this lawn. So we're hoping that we've got a match following this one and then Torben and Malcolm following that. Malcolm, Malcolm has the bye in the first round this morning. And I think Gary said he had the bye in the second round tonight. So yellow came in short, blue fired and missed, and red has smoothly run hoop three, take a 2 1 lead. Hasn't quite got halfway down the lawn. Come down nicely. Maybe four, four and a half yards short of the hoop. Uh, 
wind seems to have picked up a bit. It's not obvious on the courts, but it is if you look up at the tree line, especially your way to our left, which is south of here. So yellow came down quite nicely. Blue is a little bit short of yellow and wide of yellow. And at this stage, black will almost certainly be clearing yellow. Uh, so red is just considering his options. The Chris of old would just have walked up with red here and just splattered the black into the distance. But um, he, he had a shoulder injury a few years back and that's kind of slowed him down a bit. And instead he's gone for position and done a marvellous job of getting around all those balls and putting the red about two feet, two and a half feet out dead in front. <coughs> Jamie takes the obvious black clearing yellow. So again, the crystal holes here would have just unleashed yellow on the blue. Uh, and I think that still is the play. And continuing the good start to the game for Chris has nailed that. So a hell of a lot of pressure on Jamie here now with blue at red. And as we've already discussed, Jamie is not a huge power clearer. Uh, is very accurate though. So chances of blue hitting red over that distance are lower than 50%, obviously. Uh, but with Jamie's nice straight swing, that might actually be a better percentage hit rate than we would expect, although the payoff is probably that blue won't hit red very far when it does hit. Yeah, so nice smooth swing. Oh. Misses. Doesn't go past halfway on the miss. Must be getting acclimatised because I'm very cold. <laughs> okay, Reed runs for a 3 1 lead. Shorts this morning was a brave of cold and Oh, yeah, I put shorts on when I got up this morning and that didn't last very long. Okay, that's a nice black to five. And again, following on from yesterday and the day before, almost exactly where people have put the first ball to five which is in front about that distance back and about 10 to 15 percent angle to the hoop. Uh, uh, yellow again has come in a little short nice smooth swing again bringing blue in to a nice controlled position Further back than club players would like, but probably about the right place to be. And let's see if uh, Red has gone the uh, medium distance clearance this time and hit that as well. So it's been a quality start from Chris. When, some, when the top players are in form, it's almost like you're being assaulted. Getting a nice side on of Jamie's action here. Nice and smooth. And again, not quite a centre ball, but a nice clearance. So yellow needs to do something about blue. And on current game form, you would uh, probably not bet against yellow hitting blue here. So that's pace off and has missed. Commentator's curse. got 
I've got one spectator to the left who is showing no bias whatsoever, but we're getting a lot of come on, Jamie's. Come on, Jamie's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. Oh, so you're... I'm Susie Reid. Mrs. Russell, yes. yes. Susie Reid, yes. <laughs> okay, very nice, smooth shot. Hoop made. 3-2 to Chris. What are you two doing back again? Last game's a good game. Is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, ask him if you can pl ask him if you can play through. Ask if you can play through, or tell him you're going to play through. You're too nice. Hey. <laughs> All right, so I've got a nice red down to six. There's that a nice smooth swing. Now that was a nice smooth swing, slightly more power than Jamie normally generates. But again, this lawn, as I keep saying, does shimmy left, right, and when you're missing right like that, you probably are being done on the lawn. So Chris is coming a tiny bit hot down that same slope um, to a position just wide of the hoop. Oh, and there you go. There's an absolute cracker of a hoop there from from Jamie. From some distance. If we had action replay, we'd be using it now. We if we don't, being the amateurs that we are here doing this. <laughs> so three all. No, no, three all. Okay, it's a nice shot by Red though. So when we're watching golf croquet, we all get wound up in all the spectacular power play and all that sort of stuff and all the brilliance. But one of the things that I think is underrated and we don't appreciate enough is when a player has something unexpected like what Jamie just did with blue done against them, that they can put that out of their head and then put their next ball straight in front of the next hoop, which is what Chris has done with red. So black's well short and also could be messing around with the line of blue at red. Uh, yellow is coming in and may also have contributed to the, the chaos of trying to block blue at red. swing again. Yep, yep, yellow did its job. Protected red. Uh, blue has wicked off well down the court though. Which could, could be handy if this hoop is lost. If there is a deficiency in Chris's game, and once you call it, it's got to happen, is he tends to overpower this shot to try and get down to the next two, and it might come straight back at him. No, he got it off the ground, actually. And that's very close to... Yep. All right, so hoop run, and pass the next hoop down to the boundary. 4-3 to Chris. So black's re reasonably good. Probably would have liked another yard or two on that, but it'll do. Yellow does slightly better, but we'll have to wait and see where blue finishes. <laughs> oh, that's good use of the slope on the green. Came down on the uh, left as we look at it of yellow and turn the ball around and towards the hoop. Might, might, I think red can see that. I believe it's probably blocked yellow at the hoop. No, 
Reed's coming in pace off. Going for another snuggle, and not that far off. So you're feeling cuddly today, are you, Chris? So black has um, has cleared yellow by cutting it um, down past the hoop, and this has put um, red between yellow and blue, making it very tricky for yellow to do anything about blue's position unless it does it via hitting his partner ball red. to uh, not do that and I don't know if the camera picked up the big twist with the, the wrists on the top of the mallet and kind of steered yellow. Yes, like that, yes. Okay, blue runs the hoop, four all. Right, so the, the barracking has turned to rapturous applause now. <laughs> Trying to make croquet a mainstream spectator sport all on your own. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, again, after you've had a hoop scored against you, that is a really nice red to position that the next hoop. is also a nice bit deeper. How you going Mr Cameron, you alright? Yeah doing okay after yesterday's apprenticeship. <laughs> yeah 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 we've got that um that railing reappearing there in, in shot. Okay yellow's been bumped over short. Turned a little bit as it uh, slowed down as well. So we get a good view of um of Jamie's shot with blue at red from here. Okay, just a tiny bit off to the right and misses. Makes the hoop. 5 4 lead to Chris. Oh, I think I have to get the uh, ladies inside to knit us a rug. Yes, I think so. Thank you, blankets. That's a nice black down to the next hoop. Uh, begin. Seems to have been the standard positioning for the first ball down and a lot of the hoops is about four, four and a half and then black might even be five yards out this time. And it allows the other ball, the first ball of the opponent, to come into the gap in between and put a little bit of pressure on the clearance shot. Um, blue's come down, uh, same distance as yellow but much wider and red has run past the hoop. I wonder if it would have a casual shot with red because that's actually run past the hoop on the side you wouldn't expect it to pass on with the swing on this lawn. So black clearing yellow should be the play here. Yep, nicely done. Uh, black doesn't hold in front but that probably doesn't matter. Blue has a quite angly hoop, not out of the picture. I wonder if Chris might mix it up and do something funky here, like um, put yellow in down the line through red and see if he 
it can cause a bit of chaos by pushing red up. It'll almost certainly just get hit, but at least it changes um, Blue's mindset about potentially running the hoop. He's pasted it off, and he's just, I think he was trying to get ready, he's just drifted past it. It hasn't got to the front of the hoop. Oh, right, the, cam uh, the camera's not too bad here for positioning, and uh, where I'm sitting slightly left of the camera, I'm getting a pretty decent view of, well, if the peg wasn't in the way, I'd get a better view, but, yeah, no, just yipped that a little bit. So on off to the right, yeah. I'd, a coffee? I'd love a whole thermos of coffee, I think. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, white and one, thank you. I can't remember white one one as well. Uh, black and two. Thank you. Okay, so after the blue miss, it looks like red is now going to bunt yellow. Oh, that's cute. So he's bunted yellow up to the front of the hoop, trying to hold a wire so that black can't clear it. Seems to have done that. I mean, hasn't made yellow a runner, but has made yellow Jawsa. So black decides to hit red away a little bit and skim off past halfway towards the next hoop just in case but still hanging around so so black basically has starting to play 11 in case things go badly here but is also still playing 10 if things go well a bit of finger waving from Chris there so So we can get a bit of a sledge in on Chris. Chris is, Chris is known to sledge people at least twice before breakfast. He's already sledged um, Pete Landry about his pink uh, tinge in his clothes this morning, about whether he got the washing wrong. Um, so let's sledge Chris by pointing out the nice big white paint blob on, his, on the bum of his shorts. And he was telling me he was painting the house and he got a bit too close to the wall when he bent forward like he's just doing there in his shop and uh, put a nice big white dot, which almost looks like it's a croquet ball, on the back of his pants. Anyway, failed the hoop with yellow. Blue took position. Thank you. That's all right. And now, I think Red is going to have a crack at the hoop here. It's a bigger distance than what Jamie had, but about the same angle that Jamie had on the his pace off and allowed for the slope and nothing happened and he hit the left hand upright and bounced out <coughs> and Black's taking defensive position it's nice when I say defensive it's probably aggressive defense because you're planning to control or run the hoop but you're sitting back uh, where the opponent doesn't have an easy sort of clearance to hold a position or having said that he's taken pace off the clearance and got black far enough away and, and held in the area himself which is pretty good okay blue's just crept in wired from red Red's just positioned in front of the hoop, nice and tight. Yeah, and that's making black thinking on, I'd like to hit yellow, that's what I do. But red is more of a threat. I better hit that now. And it could be a, a bit of a loose double of uh, the hoop and red. Got the red. I think we might see Chris do a similar shot to what he did in his last clearance of take all the pace out, just get blue down past the hoop and hold some sort of position in front of the hoop left of centre. Uh, 
I can't really tell from here what he's lining up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a big statement to just take the hoop on from here and run it, but Blue is a runner as well. So. Yeah, he's taking it on. Um, and crashed into the uh, right hand upright this time, and bounced out. Yeah, look. Price yeah, when we wa when we watch these pl players play, we're always assuming that they're just playing to win. But you know, there is scope uh, at all levels to play to practice shots as well. You know, you don't have to play every game to win it. We just assume you do. It's five all. Yeah, red could promote yellow, but that would be risky. So he's just going straight for position. Good enough. Good enough. Oh, we've got the whole Reed family here now. <laughs> Double the support. Yeah. Okay, Black's come to a, again a, a position that's that's nice, but but uh, back from the hoop. So Chris is having a, a good look around. So for those of you watching closely, you will notice that Chris is wearing shorts, and uh, he does have a um, like a skin underneath his shirt, and a skin underneath his shorts for that matter. Um, the thermal type of um, shirt, underwear, whatever you want to call it. Um, but. Um, Chris is renowned for playing in even the coldest weather in fairly minimal attire. Um, in 2015 we were playing here in Tasmania and he actually went up Mount Wellington wearing shorts and it was minus two. <laughs> Didn't seem to bother him. I think all of his freckles joined up but um, yeah. So Blue took a shot, uh, didn't really impact anything at all, went comfortably past the hoop on the uh, hoop six side, and Chris is winding up. Yep, Red's run the hoop with some power down past 12 to the boundary, 6-5 to Chris. So if you'd notice closely, the last two times Chris has powered up through a hoop, that was at hoop 7 and there at 11, when the red ball on both occasions ran the hoop, it wasn't on the ground. It was actually, it actually jumped off the ground, it went through oh, 3 or 4 inches up in the air. So black came down uh, pretty short, and that's a pretty lazy shot by yellow, and that's just crashed into the back of black and stayed there so they're both quite short uh, Jamie coming in from the penalty point on the west side to a position that's that's not unworkable it's a little bit further past the ideal but it'll do Reed is struggling and didn't quite get there Cameraman will tell me, no doubt, whether any of Red is in Blue's way. I, my feeling is it's not yet. No. So Black is going to get rid of Yellow. So Jamie's 6-5 down. Um, so if you're 6-5 down and you're confident that Blue is going to run that hoop, perhaps Jamie could have done a bit more there with Black. When hit, when it hit, uh, she hit Yellow to the boundary, uh, you could have flicked Black off north on a croquet court up towards 13 or at least towards 11 and get get that ball 
closer for the deciding hoop. I was doing hand signals then when I was saying that, but you couldn't see that on the video. I'll turn the camera around for you. <laughs> no. Yellow's winding up a clearance on blue here. And got it. Great shot. So it doesn't really care where yellow goes. Remove the immediate threat. Red is not a runner, so there's no turning over the hoop on that shot, but um, has taken the threat away temporarily. And blue is coming very short, probably on the assumption that red is going to jaws. My feeling is that Chris will now play red right in front of the hoop, but not in the jaws, so that uh, black has a has a dodgy clearance on red with a potential peel of red, and blue um, can't impact red in the shot after that should it need to. But he is also checking the line to 13, just in case I guess the black jumps red if he does that he wouldn't want to be jumped and have no swing to get up to 13. Yep, that's where he's gone. Right. Is it no. Uh, yep, so I think this is going to have to be paced off and just nick red and hope for the best. And it's paced off and missed. Yep, yeah, that's the side I went to. So it's um, it's interesting, what do you do with yellow? Um, because, you know, likelihood of blue hitting red is remote. But, you know, blue could always try back of the hoop tactics and, um, and roll through the hoop and get in red's way where it's too close for red to jump. So yellow as a second runner is probably handy. Well, that's got a bit of pace. But he's red to green. Well, and it's pulled up. Uh, Robert must be feeling the cold as well, either that or he's incredibly relaxed because he seems to be wandering around with his hands in his pockets a lot. Okay, so um, black may have been lying where if if it had been black to play which it wasn't it could have hit red so blue has attempted to uh, use that line and hit black in the point your mallet would normally hit black and try to cut it into red and it's missed and so red will run for the 7-5 win in game one oops i got excited there and gave him two wins so that's game one done Pretty tight, and um, Chris probably played the slightly better game, and that's how the result turned out. But it's a best of three, so plenty of time for a comeback. Be back in a second. Yeah, cameraman's going for a break. So I'll have a bit of a look around the other.
caught since I can while we're doing that. See what I can try and detect. There's not many clips out, Pete versus Torben, so I think that's game two. Uh, looks like Pete has got hoop one, and they must be contesting hoop two. Yep, that seems to be the case. No idea who won the first one. Um, Gary and Shane. There's plenty of clips out over there. Uh, I can't tell you anything more than that. That could be game one, could be game two. Suspect game one. Barry and Robert. Very few clips out, so it would suggest that that's game two. And the one clip I can see appears to be Roberts at hoop one. So we'll say one nil to Robert in a second. Interesting shot they play, played there by Robert. His uh, red is very close to hoop two uh, as a runner. And it looks like he's played yellow and attempted to wire blue at red whilst putting yellow to hoop three, which he's done. Not in front of hoop three, but a oh, yard and a half past. Certainly an easy tap for a good position at three. And blue has missed red by a long way. So it looks very much like Robert is going to go two nil up and have a controlling ball straight in front of three almost immediately. Yep. Oh, I was pretty sure I had a pair of tracksuit pants in the car, but no. Yeah, Robert is playing extremely well um, in this competition. Did a bit of um, cowing analysis on his first match with Pete. And Robert came in at 84% and 86%, which is world class. And then he told me that when he played his brother Malcolm, he played better than that. Uh, Malcolm rocade well, apparently, and made a few errors. Uh, in general play other than that and Robert uh, wiped him out pretty easily. Cameron was back and we're off in game two. <coughs> he went and hunted tracksuit pants but couldn't find any. Oh okay. <laughs> That's a bit sad. Isn't it a bag you can stand in or something? <laughs> groundsman assures me it'll be warm in half an hour. Okay so the groundsman's call is it's going to be warm in half an hour. Good luck with that but we'll see how how much he knows the local weather. So blue came on, that's Jamie's ball, um, coming first after having lost the first game. Um, a little short, but potential potential to get in the jaws or maybe even wiggle through. Red came out deeper and more in front of the hoop. Black has been short, but possibly blocking yellow at blue. And yellow has just come in uh, to be annoying and has achieved that getting into Jamie's stance if Jamie wanted to try and get into the jaw so Jamie's now going to put yellow back out to the boundary hold a hoop running position with blue and red can choose whether to clear blue or make a statement by running the hoop straight away statement by running the hoop straight on. Once again the red ball was off the ground when it went through the hoop. So first hoop game two to Chris. Uh, again, is it, uh, somebody asked me yesterday what the standard of play was like and I said it was pretty reasonable but a lot of the games were very samey, samey samey sort of games. And uh, black to two has been very similar on all of the up and down hoops. It's always been around about the four and a half yards back. So the yellow response was to go into a similar position to black and blue has now come up at a nice pace and has bunted black forward about a yard maybe a yard and a half to a much better position. Um, 
Chris is looking nice, bemused, because he didn't know the referee's name, I think, and he's trying to uh, get the referee to move out of his line of aim. <laughs> So this is quite uh, a wide double target of blue and black here. So red's going to obviously want to hit black, and did. Oh, and followed up in a straightish line and nearly went up to the hoop. So black's come back to um, position, and yeah, yellow is now, yes, as the cameraman has observed, going to try and make another statement by just ignoring all the balls and running this, and that's a horrible shot. Um, he's kind of snatched at that a little bit, he's topped, topped the yellow, and it uh, was always on the right hand side of the hoop and bounced a lot, and didn't do anything. choose to go into a stronger position of wide from everything or can just take the hoop and does. One all. So red going across to three. Really nice weight. That's a great shot. shot at red and hit, taken red to the boundary and gone out near the boundary itself. So yellow is going to sit further back in a much more uh, aggressive deeper hoop running position and it's got that position. And blue will probably come inside yellow and has. Pretty good shot as well. So there's uh, four quality shots in a row there. So uh, it looks like looks like we're going to play the triangle. We're just going to put red in to uh, hoop running position. Let black have a go at whatever it wants to have a go at. Uh, it may have trouble seeing red through blue. And there's not a lot of value in hitting yellow unless you get an enormous cut on it because you're just hitting yellow back a yard and a half to the boundary. But yellow's going to dispatch blue, so you need to do something. So black's coming in and just nudged the red. So it must have been tight. Uh, past blue. Uh, that could have been an attempt to um, nudge blue, but it could also have been an attempt just to block red as well. So yellow is going to destroy blue to the other end of the lawn, I would think. The um, only thing it can really go wrong is cutting blue slightly the other way into the hoop, which hasn't happened. It's gone all the way down to corner four. And yellow is deflected well away. So that's the first of the uh, relay people turning up. Yep, we've got a horn and we're going to use it. Thank you. 
So Jamie not being a power player is almost certainly not rotating red from way down here in corner four. Um, it's a decent effort though. Just had the pace to get to the uh, other end of the log and missed red on the left. And red is now going to uh, make try make the statement of running this hoop and does for a two one lead. Yeah, well, I guess you know you had to make sure of the hoop there because Black was a, a runner and even a slightly better position than Red was, um, and you don't need to power Red all the way down to four if Black's behind the hoop and can't get down there itself. Uh, so Black's being forced to come left of the hoop, and that weight of four, four and a half yards short of the hoop on the up and down has happened again. And again, yellow has come inside it. <laughs> so, yeah. You believe in deja vu? Yeah, all over again, that's right. The blue's nice though, much better than on previous um, ones. It's come down to a very nice position. So black is going to clear yellow, you can see that's going to happen. So red's choices are, you know, hit black, hit blue, run hoop. And it's pays off going for position, it's inside black. And it's into a good position. Excuse me. It's going to be a great spot to be in. Black will clear yellow. I probably want to put a bit of work into black hitting right of centre and hanging around. That's it. That's the spirit. Oh, beautiful. Well done. Yep. So if yellow probably can't see a lot of blue, shaking his head as he walks in. This could be just a ball in here, I think. Yep. Yep. So a ball in puts a lot of pressure on the angly hoop for blue. So blue probably won't take the hoop, it's going to take red out. Yep. So blue taking out red, just be careful you don't hit the black on the way through. And it's not about where red goes, it's about blue stopping where red is, that's it. That's the spirit. So I'm thinking this is going to be red just coming back and then black takes yellow to boundary. Yeah, it's weighed off coming back in. Yep. So we just, it's creepy creepy here, we're just creeping slower, slowly closer and closer to the hoop. Yellow will go to the boundary pretty much on any shot you play, so black has to hold. Oops, that's so that's. Uh, maybe, maybe, but I think uh, yeah, I think I think black deflecting out to where it went was probably an error. You probably wanted to make that more of a stop shot, I think, and keep keep black in. But yep, if yellow is wide from blue through red, that that's good, but. Is blue a runner? It's hard to tell from here. Red certainly is. Even having a chance to clear the red, <laughs> yes. as opposed to being smacked away. Yes. Oh well, there you go. No, I got to confess, Chris was behind the pole that I'm, and I couldn't see him at all. So I don't know if that was an intentional. I think it was an intentional jump shot. Intentional jump shot to clear the blue mm -hmm. over the red. Yep. Yep. They rarely work, uh, and when they miss, they vanish into the distance because you have to power up to do it. So the yellow has vanished into the distance, but at least it did hit blue. But blue has hit red, uh, which is a downside, obviously. But the upside is that it, blue itself has gone to the boundary. So red now can come back in, or it can actually be super aggressive here and destroy the black and hope to deflect up to the hoop itself and that's, that's like what he's going to do 
got the he got that all except the um, the angle and as a result he's gone behind the hoop so about oh, 10 years to about seven or well, maybe five years ago Chris was the number one player in Australia um, during that time he won a lot a lot of events um, and his success was built around his ability to play multiple different types of game. He could play the big aggressive game, but he could also play the cute small game. He could be aggressive, he could be conservative, he could do everything. Um, since he did his sh a shoulder a bit, he's been less successful. And that's um, coincided with the rise in WA of Gary Phipps. And the return of the Fletchers and Ed Wilson back into golf croquet. So he's been much less um, uh, successful and much less obvious in the results in the last few years. But he's still a very good player. So we've now got all the balls back in front of the hoop except the red, which is now going to attempt to uh, remove the well, at least the blue, and maybe the black, or even both. And he's managed to get past the blue and take out the black. So Jamie here has got to assume that Yellow is going to attempt to um, take the hoop on. So Black probably needs to be doing something impactful and it's shooting at Yellow and missed. And as soon as you shoot and miss you now open it up for Yellow to in fact not make the hoop but clear blue to the boundary and hold a strong position. Could still make the hoop of course. Uh, could even go for a clearance on blue that deflects yellow in off. Unlikely, but something that could happen. Excuse me, that looks like it's going to be straight at, straight at the hoop. And as on Jaws, it's not more than half the ball's through. So it's a relatively straightforward jump shot for Jamie, but you, if you don't, don't have to catch a whole lot of yellow for, to uh, peel yellow here. So this could be uh, a very important shot in the crux of this game. And it's failed. It's a failed jump shot, but it hasn't peeled yellow either. Yes, yeah, so that's right. Black is now in play to get yellow out. It's not an easy shot, but it's doable. He's got to play percentages and set up in front, surely. And that's a good weight. That's a very, oh, it's, yeah, it's a very good weight. It's probably pulled up a yard shorter than where he would like, but then that'll do. And this is still a tough shot for for Black. There's a lot of yellow through this side. And, you know, it's not, it's not a gimme. No, that's a great shot though, uh, and that's probably the best result you would hope for from there. So Black has cleared yellow back out, defended the hoop nicely. Um, now Red is a deeper runner, so yellow probably can 
it could it could just position but it can also have a crack at the hoop here because you're going to get two shots and it's back in the jaws again and blue now is there to get yellow out but this time uh, there's very little of yellow to hit but does anyway Uh, yep. So the he's been well. He's been running a lot of hoops with the red ball because that's the one we've been talking about going through off the ground all the time. So <laughs> maybe the red ball's more friendly. <laughs> uh, no, <Nope>, it's not. <laughs> it's hit the leg and bounced away. <laughs> We're back to square one. Uh, yep. I get time to do an analysis of this game later on. This could be a, a hoop that goes up into the record number of shot area. So Black's come in as a runner, deep. Still going for that three metres out. I think Yellow's going to go yeah, medium, dip, medium pace. This is an attempt to get down, right down. Yep, and that's nice. Suspect that's just going to get hit. But, uh, if they're hitting you, they're not scoring. Yep, centre ball. Yellow to the boundary, blue halfway to the boundary. So, obviously been engrossed in commentating on the game and haven't been looking around. Uh, and now looking back behind us, the uh, car park and the athletics track is filling up quite quickly now with all sorts of things. Marquees, flags, cars, people, coffee van. It's going to be full on here today. Okay, red went in front. And black has cleared red, fairly predictably. Um, yellow could destroy blue here like he did earlier with black, but he's decided to just take deep position. And blue's going to just come in front. Tiny bit long, but not too bad. Red can see it, so I think red's going to try and move blue. Probably not, not full pace. No, just, just gone to a running position. You don't want to get red between blue and yellow. No? So black's come in. A change of tactics here. Yeah, a little wide of the hoop on the other side. Yeah, nothing else works, so we'll try something different. There's a lot of a lot of balls clustering around the hoop, and none seem to be between the yellow and the hoop. So I think this is a hoop attempt. Oops, his own red ball got in the way and he's caught the top of red and cleared himself and himself. Oh. Somebody's smoking around here, I can smell cigarette smoke. It won't be a croquet person. It must be one of these athletics people. Jawsed. <laughs> so um, Jamie managed to get Chris out of the jaws twice. Uh, so now Chris has to have a go. But Chris probably has the worst shot of the three. This is further, it's anglier, and there's less of the ball to hit. Well, that's, uh, yes. So, so yes. Uh, if Red misses this, Black could peel blue and deflect across towards five, yeah. No, no, that was never in the picture. 
And Black appears to be doing the peel. So we're looking to put blue through and deflect off towards five. Uh, took a lot of weight off so that uh, Black didn't sizzle off into the distance. So that's a pretty good result. To all. Seems like a long time since I changed the score. <laughs> it was. <laughs> so yellow coming in is not very good at all. It's quite short. Not only is it quite short, it's um, very close to the black. So the peeled ball blue will now come across and sit in front of hoop five. And then if red doesn't impact the play, and hit that as well as yeah, no, it's um, that's a bit suboptimal, but it, it's oh, it's there though. Like. Yeah, red's coming in nicely, but short. Yeah, so a bit of a missed opportunity by both blue and red there, I think. And now, as a result, black probably was going to clear yellow as decided it better try and make the hoop. And has crashed into the leg and bounced away. Huge drop in quality all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, as yellow has just missed an extremely short row, okay. Uh, and blue now has an attempt to run the hoop. <laughs> and does. So 3 2 lead to Jamie. Uh, possibly the first time Jamie's been in front in two games. Telling himself off there. I'm gonna, a few little flexes of the fingers and smacking himself in the hip. And now he's, he's responded with a reasonably good approach to six, maybe a little short. We've got a couple of games finishing on the court next to us in the second eight. So Black has shot at red and hit, but hit right of centre. Uh, deflected red a couple of yards, but Black's vanished itself into the distance. And we've got a yellow coming in a bit hot. Uh, so Chris has got the hoop surrounded, but nothing in front of it. And so blue hangs well back. Yeah, so on court three in the second eight, there's been two. Uh, Mr. Double Bank Lawn, there's been two games finished almost at the same time. And I think Phil hit off first in the second game, so Brett must have won the first. And no idea who won out of Kevin and David. So Chris has got a really nice read in front, uh, wide from black and uh, obscuring blue from the hoop. Very powerful. Black's coming in. Oh, hello. <laughs> with with a rather, well, I'd like to say immaculate, but a really lucky shot. Black's come through the back of the hoop uh, and blocked red, but uh, that's that's the good side. But the bad side is yellow is right there next to it to clear the black. And does gently. Maybe in trying to get yellow in the jaws. Uh, yellow has come across the face and sat on the leg. I don't know whether it's obscuring any of red or not when it tries to run the hoop. Blue's going immediately for the jump shot. 
So this is about a five, five and a half yard jump shot. And I think that's gone through on about the second bounce. Yep. <coughs> so that's uh, a good response from Jamie. So we've had a Chris in relative control for a game and a half, or a game and a quarter. Uh, and then uh, after some real quality shots, we've had an outbreak of some pretty ordinary shots. And now Jamie's played a couple of crackers to steal the lead. But that's a good response by Red to get across in front of the next few. Black has also put a good ball in. Yellow does not appear to be hampered by being near the leg of the hoop. And has hit black nicely, just nibbled it away. <laughs> so blue needs to hit red. Uh, yep, yep. Uh, very nice shot. So it appears the the worm is turning, as they say, and Jamie is starting to take control. But there's no immediate runner, and uh, red could, uh, and well, certainly will clear black, and could, when it clears black, kick up near the hoop, take control back again. And does. That's a cracker. That is a brilliant shot. So, got enough traction on the back ball to get it spinning up to the front of the hoop. Here comes Mary, not looking very thrilled with the weather, being a Queenslander and all. So Jamie's missed that one. That came out of nowhere. So it was about a six yard clearance. Black at red, missed. Yellow's come in trying to block blue at red and has just drifted about one ball past the block spot. Um, it could be, an, yeah, could, well, yeah, yellow's level of the hoop, but it could be enough of a distractor to put um, Jamie off. And um, you've got to pace this up because if you don't, uh, blue will turn uh, right and hit yellow rather than red. Yeah, got red. Well done. Nice shot. So red coming back in has got in the jaws from the boundary. That's a pretty good shot. Okay, so black is almost certainly not getting that red out and blue is definitely not getting that red out. So I think, yeah, I think we're going, we're going half, well, we're going halfway to halfway, I think here. We're coming out on the line and that red will want to run down to the next hoop on. Now, I think Chris might go super aggressive here and he's going to hit black. Yeah, because if he hits black, a little off center, he can deflect his yellow down to the next hoop. And if he misses it, he's just going to get sent to the penalty point, so there's no drama. This is a free shot, really. This could only end up in a bonus. And he did. He's nicked black and got yellow live well past the hoop, but it's live down here at the next hoop. So that's an underutilised play in a lot of um, croquet right up to the very top to take that free shot, if you like, with your ball at the opposition <laughs> that's sitting in the middle of the lawn. And what probably uh, Black should have done is not try to get out in the middle of the lawn and 
on Red's line, but sit on the boundary where you can't be hit. So Red's run past yellow, uh, black rather. It's 4 3 to Jamie. Blacks come down as you would in front of the hoop, but red's there to hit it. And yellow being live, legal if you like, down here on the boundary behind hoop um, eight. Can just play the position. Make the assumption that blue will miss red and then red hits black, but yellow hasn't got position. It's pulled up about a half a yard short of where he wanted it. Blue coming in is a bit heavy. So, almost certain this is red hitting black. But we just had a brief look at red running hoop. Right. Pays off. So on um, the double bank game on lawn three and uh, second eight. David Scott's hitting off first, so oh no he isn't. Kevin hit off first, so David must have won game one. Okay, so Black's decided to clear the red out and get a two versus one happening at the hoop. Yellow has a very close stop shot, which is played quite nicely to get rid of the blue, but the yellow hasn't carried down the straight line. It's kicked in near the hoop leg, so it's not a runner. And blue's come back in. So there's been a little bit of support in the crowd for Jamie here this morning, but now we've had something really unusual. We've got we've got support for the cameraman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great shot by Red. It's bunted blue away from the front of the hoop. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know. Jamie wasn't going to shoot anyway with black. So that's, that's the downside to it. Uh, and the other three balls are all the wrong side of the hoop, more or less. Black will take on the hoop here. Oh, and nice. runs it. Nice shot. So 5 3 lead to Jamie. Nobody speaking to us on the chat today. It's probably too early for everybody to get up. It's a very nice yellow. It's just going to die and hasn't quite made it there. So blue will go deeper. It's the usual response. Oh, nice. yep. And is nice as the crowd has just said. It's nice. So red should just take position. Don't try anything cute like trying to bump yellow. Well, it's pace off though, and that's not going to get there. Chris is running out of puff, he probably needs a jelly bean. So we've got two nice balls in by Jamie. And two fairly average ones from Chris. So yellow is taking blue back to the boundary. 
blue can just come back in, keep the pressure on, or it could actually have a ping at the hoop here, being 5-3 up. Might as well try to be 6-3 up. It has had to go at the hoop and just bounced out. Cleared to black, hung around itself. Black's going to return the favour here and just take red back out again. Yep, yep, nicely done. I suspect yellow will just take good position and back and back yeah that pole's in the way again yeah he's stalking this with some intent he might be trying to make the hoop nice it's half pace yep he was trying to make the hoop or jaws and he's hit the left hand upright and deflected <coughs> Blue's a little short, but back in there. coming in is cleared black. Clearances aren't going all the way to the boundary but they're just putting enough pressure on the shots. In the distance beyond where we're watching we're in lawn at six we've got Torben playing um, Pete Lander even there going to hoop 13 by the look of it. Presumably in the first game. result as last time Black tried to make the hoop it's hit the right hand upright and bounced away um, up on lawn 6 just for a second Torben just put a beautiful ball in front of hoop 13 and Pete hit, hit it with Black from a long way away and uh, Torben's yellow has gone up to the boundary near the Black That's good. Yellow's in and wide, as the cameraman's pointed out. So blue is now being forced into a, uh, a very angry hoop. Now taking the pace right off and falling into the jaws just about. Um, so it's fairly crucial to figure out if yellow is wired from black or not. Because yellow is in a beautiful jumping position. Uh, red less so, um, but if black can hit yellow, we've really got to do something about that. So either jump now or bump yellow. No, he's tried to block black at yellow to protect the jump shot. No idea from here whether that succeeded or not. And everybody's playing their poker face, and nobody can telling us anything. Although Jamie's body language tends to suggest that he's got the block and Jamie can't see yellow. Might try to hit red on the yellow. Uh, yes. Oh, damn good effort. Probably got red into the stance a bit. Well, the continuing battle up there on uh, number six at hoop 13. Torben has just played a ball in from 
halfway down the lawn and cleared his own runner from the front of hoop 13. Okay, yellow jump shot. I'm liking it myself. We'll see what happens. Yep, that's that's good. Did he get it? Yep. Oh, so 5-4 to Jamie, but Jamie has uh, blue in a tricky spot. He's done a pretty good job of it. Out to the side. Yeah, yeah it was always going to go wide, but the length is good. So the red ball needs to be similar length. And no, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a bit short of blue, but it's um, it's out there in front. So blue will hit it, but and again, Jamie's black. This time it's the second ball down, not the first ball. Has gone that four and a half, five yard distance short of the hoop on the up and down, and that's actually blocked blue at red. So if Chris likes red at the hoop from where he is, he may throw yellow in and give blue something to hit. So although blue can't see red, blue can hit black and that will propel red away. Yeah, so yellow's coming in hopefully as a runner or a stroke threat. Stroke, give blue something to hit that's short. Looks like Pete's just made uh, hoop 13 up there for a 7 6 win against Torben. They're shaking hands, so that must have been game two. So Jamie's taken on the hoop and failed on the left hand upright this time. And Chris has decided it doesn't need to try this risky hoop now. Just bump black out and hold nice position and does. just padded back into a kind of a no-man's land. Um, if Yellow's feeling any threat whatsoever, Yellow's just going to pound the black straight back out. Yep. Drifted the Yellow up a little more than he would have liked. Quite the pressure shot here for Blue. And nicks it. So that could be good enough. Red, I think, will still. Yeah, on balance, I think Red will still try to make the hoop from here. You could position closer, but I think making it's probably the game. pace and runs the hoop just. All you needed. Five all. So black coming in looks like it's going to be a little short. So I won't be overly happy with that. Um, so if red likes the clearance on black, yellow will just go to the front of the hoop. If red doesn't like the clearance on black, yellow will probably go to the mirror image of black on the other side. And it's going in front. Blue's just coming in. Uh, good enough. So it's really all here on uh, whether a red hits black or not. I couldn't help myself but move that clip. <laughs> that's, that's on the left hand side of the hoop. It's to the other side. <laughs> yeah, and he's missed. Doesn't look overly happy as you would expect. 
not the end of the world just yet. We've got black will clear yellow. Uh, but yellow does get a shot at blue, obviously. Yep. Nice clearance. So I guess the downside here is uh, for yellow shooting at blue is if you go through blue, miss to the far boundary, you might find blue doesn't run but jaws is uh, for the up and down because none of your balls are anywhere around. But Chris is on balance a hitter, so he's probably going to take this shuttle. Oh, he's paced off though, which is probably um, trying to trying to hit and hang around in case Blue did jaws. I think the groundsman was right about the sun coming out. Um, he might have been a bit off the half hour, but okay, Blue runs. Six five. I feel there's quite a crowd building up here today behind me. They seem quite invested in this game. It's a nice red. Black's uh, trying to clear. He's missed. Near miss on red and then near, well, if it's missed red on that side, it couldn't have been anywhere near the hoop. It just looked nice as it went past. So blue may have a, a bit of a dodgy shot at red there. It might have the peg might be in the picture, the hoop in the backswing might be in the picture. So I think Chris will double up, but he wants to double up probably with yellow between red and hoop. Yep. Yep. Nice. Yeah, you don't want to bring yellow down short of red and give blue a chance to hit yellow onto red. So blue is shaving past the peg, and the lawn will swing it away a little. So red, uh, red and yellow need to win 12 and 13. So you can run 12 now and take your chances. Or you can bunt blue out and try to engineer a bit more control at 12 before you think about making it so that you've got a better chance of making 13. Yep. That's what we decided to do. Bit of a target for black there. Two balls lying side by side. Probably doesn't matter which one you hit, even though yellow plays next. Pace off to position. I feel we might. No, no point promoting. I think yellow's just going to the front of the hoop here. the third of two options I thought. <laughs> it's good this game's got lots of options. That's <laughs> 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 oh, just forcing red to hit black now. <laughs> Blue probably wired from yellow. He's paced off. Doesn't look happy because you obviously didn't want that much pace off. Black will just hit red, I would think. Yep. And it's actually a good result because I don't think yellow can hit black there. So I don't think yellow's hitting anything. But it can't pop its head out where blue can see it either. nice. 
Let's put a bit of pressure on whatever black does and blue can't see it. So blue will hit red, I think. And just hold. It doesn't matter where red goes. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter where red goes. Just keep blue there. Okay, so I think red will want to be nowhere near blue, so I reckon red would be quite happy to go out beyond black here. That's probably not ideal. That's, that's probably not good because black can hit that and hold in a jump shot spot if you like yours. Is. Well, black's ignoring blue, uh, the red, and hitting yellow. Mm, I'm not sure about this. I think this is only going to improve what yellow can do. Yeah, so it's it's spat yellow out where it's freed it up and it can do whatever it likes now. Get rid of blue and lose red. I could like get rid of blue, get rid of black. Could get in, well, outrageously get in the jaws, but it could promote red. It could do anything really. It uh, could do nothing when it was on the lead. Now it's got everything. Uh, me personally, I'm liking softly on black. Oh. It's going to block blue at red. Yeah, it's going to block blue at red, okay. Yeah, I was liking softly on black, putting black just this side of the hoop and yeah. yellow just that side of the hoop. Anyway. Trying to centre ball this and take both balls out. Oh, just oh, just man. missed. Okay, so red to run. Six all. I've run a lot of statistics on this in the last year or so, and, and only 25% of the time does the person who runs 12 win 13. So that's all. That's quite low. So all the money's on Jamie. That's yeah, a good ball up. Red just having a look at the lie it's got up to black. Can't be unhappy because it's gone straight away. So the debate for yellow is do I just position or do I hit black now? On this angle a hit on black will probably send black towards the corner which would be nice because yellow will be in front of the hoop. I miss it's probably not a huge disaster. Yeah, it's missed. Alright, so blue's challenge is let's probably get one between black and hoop. Pace off. Trust, trust, a lot of trust in the lawn here. That's curling, 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 and that's the curl on the lawn. Right, so blue's out of the running for a while. But all the same, black's still a good ball. You can hear that PA through the microphone, but it sounds like somebody's singing underwater. We have to get the Torben to come and translate the Danish into Go English for us. Go get that flipper. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>
shot if that's going to be going on all day. That's that's going to be annoying. <laughs> okay, red, the big pressure shot looks like he's taking on black. No, we're near it. All right, so no matter how bad blue was, black was good enough to say that uh, we could still win this game here. So this is to keep your twenty-five percent record intact. Yeah, well, I need a need a lot of <laughs> a lot of hoop thirteen runs <laughs> from the hoop twelve runner to change that percentage. Uh, well, you know, second best result. It had a lot on it, hit a lot of leg, but spun and stayed in the jaws. Now, I'm going to tell you a tale of woe here. I've, play, <laughs> I've played Chris many times, and I've lost to Chris a lot of times, 7-6, on this shot. He has an annoying habit of playing a jump shot from the boundary that comes out about two balls high, never bounces, and just goes straight through. Um, I've lost many, many times to him on this shot. No bounce from there. No bounce from there. He keeps, he keeps it flat and low, and it goes through just above the ball. It's in the jaws. It's a, it's a fairly annoying thing. Oh, I hope. Right. But most, but most of those were before he busted his shoulder. So, um, yeah. I was going to say pre or post shoulder. Yeah. But, um, good player will tell you. Just remember, remember the good shots. Let the muscle memory kick in. I reckon he'll hit black, but it's a matter of whether it uh, whether he gets. Or he'll be on the line to hit black, whether he peels it or whether he gets over it. That's the thing. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. Oh, he got it. Yep. Yep. He is a good jumper. Oh dear. Yeah, never let Chris have a jump. <laughs> He's one yep. of the better ones. Yep, that's a sensational yeah. jump shot. And this time it came this came at um out on went on the first bounce. So line was good. Got the bounce in the right spot. Line was great. Yeah. Yep, Phil's gonna be practicing those now when he gets home. Scored a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can always get a couple. It's, it's making it's them more making consistent. And when yeah. it really counts, not when yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Not when you're just hacking around at club day. Yeah, that's right. Around. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's a two-nil win to Chris. Oh, we'll reset. We'll reset. Ready for the next game. And we'll turn the mic off for a while and go and get something to eat.
Okay, we're back on. Second match of the day. We've got Shane Downey from Victoria playing Barry Jennings of South Australia. Uh, Shane, blue and black, has put a good blue in. Uh, There's a good red next to it. Black was short, yellow missed. Excuse me. And blue has failed the hoop. Uh, and I'm going to guess we might see another jump shot. Finish the last match with a jump shot, and we might start this one with one. Uh, well, kind of, sort of. <laughs> so, oh, it was definitely a jump shot. he definitely jumped shot, and he definitely jumped it, but it's dropped down and stayed in the jaws, but it has kicked blue back to a position where, if black and yellow don't do anything, blue would have a lot of work to get that up and down quick enough. To make that jump shot from there. So, I don't know what Black's trying to do here. Maybe he thinks he's got enough red to get it out. Oh, it's hit the hoop leg. Uh, hasn't moved. Yeah, it hasn't moved red, but he's kicked the blue back a tiny bit to give himself a bit more. Room for a jump shot. Barry's checked it with the head of his mallet. See how far back it's gone. And whether he thinks he needs to hit that with yellow. I think he's decided he does. And he does. Jump shot out of the question. Yep. So Shane's giving up and going halfway. Being an ex-policeman, that's the first time he's probably ever had to give up. Usually people give up against him. <laughs> so first hoop to Barry. a nice black but it'll get hit and again it's um, four four and a half yards back from the hoop again much like we saw in the previous um, match you almost come inside it a bit Using the uh, slope, uh, abusing the slope as it turns out, and um, it's gone back to across the face of the hoop. So red hits black, red misses black. Barry can be quite a spotty player. He can be absolutely sensational when he gets his mojo rolling and he doesn't take any time whatsoever. Uh, but he does sometimes take a while to actually get that mojo happening. Oh, Wade will be pleased that I've been joined by another West Australian so that I don't have to talk to myself. So Wade's given us a sleep this morning. Yeah. He reckons that I and talk to myself because I'm stuck in Perth so remote but I'm apparently I'm just like Chris who talks to himself a lot uh, you talk to yourself because no one listens <laughs> <laughs> comedians everywhere so uh, nice jump shot Chris yeah thanks <coughs> I talked you up but I said you wouldn't do it on a bounce. I said it'll just go straight through on the full. But you gave me out the bad shoulder. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I gave the bad shoulder um, story. Well, I struggled to get the bounce here, like the second, <coughs> the second bounce. So, but it's probably probably a little bit too difficult to get the seven yeah. yards on the full. Yep. Okay, so Barry's um, just persisting in getting balls back in. It's 
Nice shot by Shane, looking for a bit of a random in off there, but look, may have stopped far enough back or it might be up on the leg. Can't tell from here. He's going to have a look. The way he looked at it, I think it is back from the leg a little bit. Still, if he draws his yellows in the jump shot spot, so he needs to move yellow. Well, perhaps not today though, unless he's managed to just wire that. shot. Picks off the black. <laughs> so who's playing uh, Malcolm in the next round, do you know? Oh, you and me. Okay. Yeah, I said he's going to go. Alright, so he's, yeah, okay. So he's over on the practice long because he, he had the bow, yeah. Yeah, he said if I was going to be short, he'd go on the court. I told him I want 15 minutes. Mm. And he said, oh, I'll go practice on practice court then. Okay. I'm quite happy to do that. Yeah, yeah. Right, so Blue's come in and given uh, Yellow a nice little cuddle there. Um, it's hard to actually tell what's like. Well, it's a good, good choice, probably. Uh, what was likely to happen. But if Black had been left where it was, Black could probably have hit Blue which would have transferred power into yellow and moved yellow away. So red's taken black out. Um, which kind of reverses things. So if black hits yellow now, it will spit his own blue away. And it, but if yellow can run, you've still got to hit it. And then if yellow can do a croquet stroke, if they're touching, then you probably want to hit it as well. What are you looking at? I'm just checking out the sledges against you, Marty. Uh, no, I only had one sledge. Our fellow rednecks are getting upset up there in Queensland. You know, we've got all the nice heat and they've got all the wet weather. His Malcolm's looking sharp dressed today. Oh, looking very sharp. Oh. Looking too sharp for a game of crazy. Too, too sharp dressed there, Malcolm. <laughs> okay, so uh, Yellow is playing a croquet stroke in the opposite direction. So obviously the lie of that ball wasn't helping go towards the hoop, so he's gone away from the hoop. But he's got a lot on his own ball and not much on um, blue. No. <coughs> okay, so blue has jaws, which is not ideal with red sitting on the other side of the hoop. Oh, uh, there you go, he's got that out and red's followed through the hoop. No, uh, and now black is waiting on the other side. He could nick red away, or he could just jump him. Yeah, it looks like a jump. No, it's not. It's not. He's just trying to nick it away. That's a terrible shot. Uh, yeah, it's not a good shot choice. I don't think it's a good choice, and it wasn't a well played shot either. Um, so he's put red in the jaws, we think, from here. Not that we can tell. But black is right behind it. So how much of red he can actually use to get his mallet face on him is also open to conjecture. So yellow has a ping at it, hoping to perhaps peel red and missed.
100% sure what blue will do, but I'm guessing it's not going to try and hit black. No, it's just going to come in. Yeah, he's a long way back for a jump shot. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, that's right, yeah. Yeah. He's not Chris McWhorter, though. Robbie just attempted a bounce. Jump, I don't think he got it though. Hmm. Okay, so what happened there? Well, we turned away to watch uh, what was happening between Torben and Robert up well, on the far lawn. And Robbie uh, just did a bounce jump. At three. Yeah. And what what did Red do there? Here. Into the oh, he just tapped it a bit further into the hoop, and then Black has, Black has tapped his further in as well. I don't follow that at all. Just trying to keep Red uh, in a potential faulting position, so... He was obviously looking to jump with Blue, but now Yellow has put itself into his stance where he wants to be when he plays the jump shot. So blue stop shotting yellow out. Referee coming out again. Barry all squeezed up. You know, if if there's no way black's getting there's no way black's getting red out of that hoop. So I don't think red has to do a whole lot here. He can just deem. And he's playing it across. Surely it's not already through. No, they would have put a clip on if that was the case. Um, all right, he's just gently touched it. And... No, he's waiting for he's waiting for Shane to leave before he puts the clip on yet. So Shane is playing away towards hoop three. And that that's one we may have to study on the replay later on to figure out what, what was going on there. Now, a bit, of cat and mouse. a bit of cat and mouse. And we've also got the issue from the other day now cropping its head up. We've got a lot of glare on the screen. So 2-0 to Barry. So black seems to be short-ish. Yellow long, blue long. and red all tangled up in the back of hoop two. So not off to the quality start we saw in the last game, match. Uh, uh, blue, uh, red has got that out, wrong side of hoop. Thought and Shane is just trying to play in and has jawsed. Um, not a hundred percent sure of the wisdom of that. He's got yellow there on the side ready to hit him out, which it has, and he also had red there on the other side ready to hit him out if yellow didn't. Um, so blue has gone back a little. Yeah, red has come through the back of the hoop again. Um, this time without the aid of another ball. <coughs> so black's going to have a, a ping at red. Um, 
Yeah, red. Oh, yeah. oh well, there you go. That's that's a nice result. Didn't see that coming. He's got red out and in off into the jaws, and then yellow said, "Okay, I'll just hit you out again," which he's done. Uh, and now <coughs> blue has an open run at the hoop from uh, how far out are we calling that? Two and a half yards, three yards. Yeah, more like three, I think. And, um, okay, so maybe they put glad wrap on these hoops between <laughs> games or something because uh, that's also in the jaws. <laughs> and with yellow sitting again on the side, ready to hit it away, which has been what's been happening. So, red right next to black. Uh, is red. Hitting black? No. Promoting yellow? Maybe. No. Let's have another fly at blue. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess if he hits black up behind it, black and then peel blue. Uh, but if he could have promoted his yellow, that might have put a lot of pressure on black. Anyway. So, black, rather than clearing yellow, has attempted to stymie it somehow and seems to have got into his stance and yellow's got blue out again so if he's got a sense of humor then blue's just going straight back in the jaws <laughs> yeah. it looks more intent than just jawsing here though Yep, yep, that one's got through. Two one, two one to Barry. Red down to four. Um, so we've got um, black coming now. I don't want to sound like a broken record, but we've seen black in that position a hell of a lot this morning. And yellow, resp <laughs> yellow response is pretty much the same. Somebody asked me yesterday what the play was like, and I said, the it wasn't too bad, but they were very samey sort of games. Do you believe in deja vu? Yeah, Do again. You in deja vu? Well, that's it. Do yes, you it. In okay, deja that's enough of that. <laughs> okay. Blue's nicked yellow a little closer. Uh, red, we think, will make the hoop here. Again, if he's got a sense of humor, he'll just put it in the jaws. Oh, no, it's rejected. Uh, black clearing yellow, I would think. So while this predict predictability seems to go on a little bit, uh, Pete has started against Jamie over on the far lawn number seven. On eight, we've got Robert playing Torben. That would be uh, bottom versus top. Or top versus bottom, depending on how you want to look at it. Oh, didn't hit that convincing one. Black barely hit yellow at all. Um. <coughs> Want to make sure you hit it with top and bottom. Mm, yeah. So Chris is going on against Malcolm shortly. Gary has the bye. So that's Gary finished for the day. Uh, they only have two rounds and one and one random match today. Okay, so we've got yellow in front of the hoop. Blues looks like it's clearing red. Yep, and does. So black must be able to see must yellow. Otherwise, yellow. there's no point doing that. Um, 
just quickly around the place. David Scott and Kevin finished. So I'm going to guess David Scott must have won that in two. Brett and Phil uh, early days in this game, so that must be game three. Um, everybody else seems to be off, so the rest of the first rounds must have finished. So perhaps check croquet scores and see what's going on. Could see yellow. Got Barry coming back in to have two balls in front. No, that's always good if you can, as long as you don't give blue a chance to hit both balls, but it doesn't really matter, and blue's only hitting one, and black is much further away, so you have to play some percentages at some time. I assume he's going to hit red, but it looks like he's going to hit yellow. <laughs> no. It's just a deceptive angle that we're sitting at. We're kind of, we're kind of in corner, two, uh, where are we, corner one. We're kind of in corner one, and we kind of have to look across on a, an angle uh, with the camera and with where we're seated because of the pole. That obscures quite a lot of stuff in the corner there. Uh, presumably when we do a professional uh, live stream no. at the World well, Teams, which we hope will happen, um, it's, uh, two, three, it'll be done from some sort of um, roaming camera set up and a marquee, <coughs> which may or may not actually be able to see the court. So we won't have these issues of... Um, I have thought that a little drone might be Yeah, they, the they have talked about yeah, yeah, they have talked about getting some overhead shotage with drones and um, a GoPro at height. Um, some concern was raised about noise from drones, but they seem to think that they'll be pretty much uh, well, not soundless, but minimal sound. So Barry's run that one for a three-one lead. <coughs> Very nice. <laughs> so while there's a, a slower speed of play here, we might just fire up croquet scores and see what's on there. Probably like to know what's happening at Can Lee myself as well. Okay, so blue was nice, red was short-ish, black is nice. Uh, yellow has hit its own ball, which is less than ideal, but has punched the red down halfway. So presumably blue will make the hoop and, and red is actually in a reasonably good position down halfway down the lawn now. Okay. Didn't sound uh, really convincing as it went through, but it has gone through. Uh, well down towards six and off to the side, down the slope. Three, two to Barry. Red just goes in. <laughs> Black's gone down a reasonable-ish position. Yellow's going to go down the slope, but it's held up enough to still be a good ball. May, may have blocked blue at red. Hi. Um, Would you like?
like a drink, not alcohol at this hour. But no, no. Oh, well, I've been drinking coffee all morning. I'm getting all wired up, so I might as well have another one if you don't mind. White, How do white you and take one. It? Just regular? Yeah, white and one, thanks. Yeah. White, white and one and black and two. Black and two. Black Just a slight delay there while we sorted some coffee and other stuff out. <laughs> uh, so red ran six. So, sorry about the delay. The cameraman's all over it. Okay, so Barry, Barry four two up. Uh, uh, black's a bit short. Yellow has gone long. But not not too bad. Uh, blue is blue is also short, but it seems to be back enough that it's uh, it can jaws maybe run if he got lucky, and black could bunt it up a bit closer. Um, but I think they need to remove the uh, red and or the yellow here with black. And he's done that to remove the red onto the back line in front of the hoop. Um, yellow obviously can take out blue or it could even possibly make the hoop before jaws from where it is. What would you like to eat? Um, A little plate of something? Oh yeah, yeah thank you, I trust you. <laughs> okay, so yellow attempted to make the hoop and got an enormous amount of spin. It's kicked back and then turned around and gone around the other side of the hoop and if you were looking away and looked back you would have thought that had gone through. That's alright. Cheers, thank you. For him? Yeah, no, it's for you. <laughs> Blue's taken really nice position and Red's come in behind it. These boys are coming up with some really interesting scenarios. It's a bit Replaying this game for a coaching session would be quite interesting, I think, because there's some very interesting ball lineups. <laughs> yeah, and Black's going to add another one to it. Well done. That's lovely. <laughs> That's like, it's like a multicolored caterpillar. <laughs> oh, he's going to go back through the hoop and add another one. Oh, no, he's hit it hard. Damn. <laughs> oh, no, but he's managed to keep it there. <laughs> I'm going to say hand-picked oh, as many cheese, no, but they're not. Oh, okay. But they're collected by me. Okay. Yep, so we've got blue not invited to the party. Uh, and black, red and yellow extremely close together. I mean, who knows what's touching what um, in front of the hoop. Okay, so he's offset the red slightly so that black can't hit yellow, which is pretty clever, on the assumption of course that nothing is touching, and we can't tell that from here. Um, no. Seems to me this could be one of those cases where if you just don't know what to do, just deem it and make it the other guy's problem. He's having a good look at all sorts of little bits and pieces. Oh, I'm not liking the look of this. He's got a lot of tilts and he's got... Presumably going to try and punch red out off to the. Uh, he's done it very softly to keep black behind yellow. Now yellow. Well, yellow certainly can't go towards the hoop. It's got to go back the other way. And if they're touching, this is a, an easy shot for Barry to hold yellow there and punch black to the boundary. If they're not touching, then we're in fault city. Yeah. yeah, there's markers being well. Uh, we'll assume that that's the case because he's marking, but 
you know, there may, if a person's not an AC player, they may just be marking because they don't really understand the nuances of a croquet stroke. Um, but we'll go with um, his marking because they're not touching. But then Gary, uh, Barry, sorry, appears to be coming in mighty straight. <laughs> Oh, oh, he's hitting backwards over the top of black. Okay, interesting. Well, this game really has had everything. <laughs> so, we decided it hasn't gone through. Uh, it's going to take some getting out, so blue is probably going to try and get rid of red if it can see it. And black jumps yellow. Right, so it could see it. It's a damn shame that didn't go in the back of hoop five. That would have topped off an interesting game so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, put that on there. That's right. We're wanting all sorts of crazy stuff now. Well, on what we've seen so far in this game, how about a red hits yellow, which clears black? <laughs> oh, it's in there? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, so this is Barry Jennings of South Australia playing red and yellow and Shane Downey from Victoria playing... Um, black and blue. Okay, so it's a um, relatively straightforward jump shot. Uh, the only thing that can really go wrong is he catches a tiny bit of yellow and drags it through. And he didn't. So that's a nice jump shot. And a very interesting hoop comes to an end. Yeah, we'll move on to another interesting hoop, hopefully. 4-3 to Barry. Okay, so um, yellow, very good ball down. Yep, uh, Blue's trying to keep the theme rolling by giving it a snuggle but he's just rolled off on the slope so it's a good ball red is dying a bit and coming down that same slope useful Center ball yellow and followed down the line to to wire or block um, yellow back at blue. Okay, so Barry has um, kept with the theme of unusual shots and has played a nice little bunt on black, but just deflected yellow into a position to block blue at the hoop. Yep. So again, jump shot could be on. Uh, yep, take the red, that's very good. Good good observation. Could also play uh, the blue forward onto the yellow onto a left hand or right hand edge and just try to nick yellow off the straight line. But that would open things up for red to have a ping. shot but based on the previous hoop I'm, where I guess we're both disappointed that blue didn't gently roll yellow into the jaws <laughs> yes. and follow it down yes. <laughs> Coming in hot. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> Threaded through the gap between black and yellow and nearly nearly ran the hoop. Yeah. So black now could clear yellow or it can just ignore yellow, run past and run the hoop. And does. So that's tied it up at four all. Okay, so yellow coming over to nine is pretty good. A tiny bit long. But holds a bit of control. Blue seems to have pulled up short on the other side with an angling attempt to get towards the hoop like yellow has gotten and red's come inside that. We've seen a number of people come inside tight to this hoop and the ball just seems to stop dead there. Except for Barry's yesterday that did the remarkable left hand turn it went in the jaws. Um, this one has done what most of them have done and then just stopped in that vicinity there. Black's going to hang out deeper, which is probably quite clever. Fairly predictable clearance, yellow on blue. Blue coming back in a little. Yeah, that's nice. Yep, a tiny bit past the line, but a nice distance out. Red will, or red can choose to hit it or jaws. With black already a runner, I think red or jaws. That's deceptive, that's bounced back a little. It looks, well, it's really hard to tell. It looks like that's really good, but it may not be because of the angle we're looking at from. But judging by the fact that black is now looking at hitting yellow, I suspect it probably is good enough for stopping black doing anything to red. So blue is going to have to do that from the slightly more angly position that it's in. Yeah. Nice enough shot to bump yellow a bit further away. Hit it on the right hand side, would have been happier with the best one. Yeah. As we look at it, right hand side would have obviously been better to hit yellow further away right. and kick black onto the boundary. Yeah. So, uh, what are we going to call here? Yellow at blue would seem obvious, but from what we've seen in this game so far, something witty like <laughs> yellow peels red. <laughs> uh, a bit hard here. I think the, the call on the blue is the, what we might end up seeing. Yeah. Yeah, he's just holding up, waiting for Pete on the other line to play a shot and move away. He's played the shot, but he hasn't moved away. Now he's fixing the boundary. Yellow's got blue. And he's hit it to the boundary, which is good, but he's actually, although he's pun punched blue a lot further away, he's actually given blue a better shot at red. It's longer, but it's better.
Yep, so Blue's hit that. <coughs> and we're back to square one. Yep. So yeah. Red's coming in. Back to a reasonably predictable position. Again, maybe a fraction long. Okay, people are starting to drop some clothes now because the um, sun has burnt off the clouds as predicted. Gently, just past the blue, to a relatively defensive position. Yellow coming straight in in front. Possibly trying to, to jag a, a block through black, where blue couldn't see um, yellow. Just drifted past that, so blue can see yellow. But you can't be lazy here and clip your own ball on the way through. No, he's done well. Maybe put off a little bit. Hit, hit right at centre. Well, he obviously thinks that red's not running. It's, it is deceptive from where we're sitting. But the way Barry's lining it up, it looks more of a runner than, than I think he or we thought. And he runs it. Yeah, he runs it. <coughs> so five four to Barry. I'm just gonna put the I'm just gonna put my hat over the phone so that we don't overheat that again today. Right. So that's a nice black down. That's bucked the trend, that's got up there and closer. Good distance back to control everything and still be a runner. So, Red staggered through the hoop. It doesn't look like he's uh, hampered himself too much, but he's taken the big shot with yellow at black all the same and missed. Okay. Blue coming in at uh, a reasonable-ish pace. And might have got a... Oh, I don't think it really matters because Red's swing is pretty much restricted to a straight line. It wasn't going to hit black anyway. Um, oh, unless he takes pace off and uses a slope like that. <laughs> Yeah, they're all lined up again. Um, yeah, so blue, not really a black's backswing. Kind of laid a superfluous block. Red couldn't get a normal swing, but could get a good swing. Came down a bit short. Right. Judging by the stance, uh, blue is in the way of black's shot. You just got to put black in front of the hoop here, surely. I mean, if you can wire it from yellow, that's great. Just you don't have to do any more than put black in front because red's uh, blue is taking care of red. That's it. So yellow coming in with pace off, has nicked black but hasn't materially moved it but has added one to the line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the planets, the planets. <laughs> no, blue predictably will take care of red. Once again the yellow very close to Shane's foot there. Blue's got 
red right to the back line. The local spectators there, foxing the ball for him. And that's um, looks like Mary Harrington, I think. Yes. That's the right name, I hope. Yes. Going to one of my coaching sessions. So Barry will come rocketing down with that stop shotty little action that he's got and that's nowhere near it. So Black will be attempting to run 10 to tie the score at 5 all. Does. Yeah. Rock the table with the coffee on it. Alright, Barry's put yellow across in front of the next two quite nicely. Blue is um, short and angly. Oh! So Barry likes his yellow enough that red is going to crunch the black away and he's actually done that so well he's, he's managed to deflect red over into the action as well. Very nice shot. Very nice shot. Got, black's got a well the slope's gonna well it doesn't really matter coming from that angle I suppose my, my feeling is if you shoot at yellow you're gonna hit red so maybe you need to shoot at your own ball blue and let the slope help you hit yellow unless you can crank it up enough to keep it dead straight he's looking at it oh. So Yellow played that quite nicely, and that's a great weight. That is a brilliant weight. Stop, stop, stop. Yep, that's in the shadow of the hoop, which is pretty much dead in front. <coughs> Six inches out. And that is a great shot. So 6-5 to Barry, and looking like, looking like game over pretty quickly here, unless Blue pulls some miracle out. Um, and I two for one shot, the, the yellow and the Well, my feeling is that the yellow's not involved because that looks like its peg's going to be in the way on that line. <laughs> it's going to swing too down the hill, so you, yeah, you know, shooting at yellow is probably not op not an option at all. This has got to be um, around the peg and hope to draw back or straight at the hoop. Straight at the hoop. Oof. <laughs> okay, so red's coming down as insurance, but it's gone a bit far and a bit wide. And now black's looking puzzled because maybe hoop two is in play here. Might be like a lot of insurance policies. <laughs> Not yep. Yeah, there's a lot of very careful peering at, at the hoop in front of him here. So hoop two may be in the line of black at yellow here. Maybe not completely, but certainly part of it. He's come inside it. And that's close. He's got it. Oh, well done. 
Well, he looks disappointed because he's done well to hit that, but he's hit it straight into the hoop leg and it's bounced. Fortunately, he didn't go through. But bounce back where yellow's not gone far away. Yeah. Now we're having a bit of a chat about something. I'm not quite sure. Probably about where blue went out. Because so, that could be fairly critical to where he positions um, yellow here. Somewhere it's fallen down. So yellow's just padded in front. It's um, warming up a little and glaring up a little here. So put the sunnies on and I can't see anything through them. Give them a bit of a clean. So black is looking at coming through the back of the hoop here. Presumably that means blue can't see yellow and there's zero value in anything hitting red. Okay, so he's decided that that's tricky, so blue probably has to hit black, I would think, to give black a better shot at yellow. It have to be pretty precise because red was so close. Yeah, well that's right. but there's Absolutely, but I mean, if it's all you've got, it's all you've got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's looking a bit more positive about maybe trying to hit the uh, edge of yellow. No, uh, yes, he's going edge of yellow, and he's hit the hoop. Okay, so that's interesting because that's restricted red's options. You know. Red, red hitting black is not appealing because um, it, black's not doing anything anyway, and that's so that stymie there is actually good. Any tiny bit of red that's stopping black from going through the back of the hoop and styming yellow is is a good shot from red. And we're deciding whether they're touching or not here. I think. Probably doesn't make a lot of difference because um, whether they're touching or slightly apart, you can play this like an um, AC shot, uh, takeoff shot in AC, uh, and black ought to go down the same line. And you're trying to go through the back of the hoop and, and interfere with yellow. That's as, as tough a shot as you're going to get no matter what. And, but um, Shane looks like he's playing this like an, a roll in AC, a split roll. And uh, no, hoop got in the way. Shane does play a little bit of AC. Barry plays a lot of AC. Right, so tap through for the win. Game one done. Very interesting game comes on there. Yeah. Just make sure we've got everything under control. We haven't.
Okay, we're just discussing options for how we're going to keep the glare off the off the uh, camera, but and uh, sorry, off the um, well, off the camera and off the um, laptop we're using, but more the laptop. But we've given up on that now because I've started game two. So it was a good blue, a little bit angly. Red's a slightly better response, but similar, similar. And here we go again. Black's got inside. Made a nice little triangle with a rule in each other's way a tiny bit. If you stand there and create your own shadow, you can actually see it better. <laughs> okay, so let's see if you like and uh, put one in the middle of all this. We can start the this game the same we finished the last. Are we just going for it? We got you a sombrero. <laughs> yes, that's the spirit. Okay, so blue punching red out to the back line and hopes to come off. That's it. A little bit across to the line. Maybe try and pull off a block. But I'm thinking Barry would like um, like this potential double of blue and hoop. He's gone for it, nicked blue. It just shaved past yellow. Um, now black. Is not trying the to hoop, he's just gonna keep control, punch yellow out and hold in front. Except he's going completely in the wrong direction. Uh, the, the good side about that is blue is over there to put him put black back again. Uh, yeah, and that's what he's gonna do by the look at. So yellow's come in as predicted and blue will attempt to promote black back. He's taken a bit of pace off, um, and that's probably not good enough, so he'll probably be hitting yellow. So red's now come back. Mm, he hasn't seen a ball, he's basically cleared himself. He's shooting hoop, but I wouldn't think it would be pace on because you don't want to be too far away if you miss. So he's got enough leg there to keep yellow hanging around. That's probably a reasonable result if you're going to fail the hoop. And blue to position in front. So again, red has the. He's probably going to hit blue, but it does have the um, potential double of blue and hoop. And that red's gone hoop and run it. Well done. Okay, so Shane's um, <laughs> been dudded there, I think. He's, he's come up the correct side and nothing's happened with the slope. <laughs> but he had a good length on it anyway. A yellow to position, but quite deep. That position that the first ball's been taking a lot. Blue's gone... Oh, it's coming down the slope a little. But blue's gone past the hoop. Red's come the wrong side of yellow for the slope, but its distance is nice. Uh, oh yeah, it probably is wide from blue, but I don't think it matters right at this moment because black's pinging the hoop. No, that's a rejection. So yellow could take on hoop or it could promote red to a wide spot from blue if it's not already. Yeah, but he's taking on hoop. 
and running it. Two nil lead. Didn't we have a two nil lead in the last one as well? And he kind of kept that two point lead all the way through from there. So blue's long. And red is actually reasonably good. Most of the way back to the boundary, but in front. That's an improvement on hoop three in the last game when they had it surrounded and nobody was anywhere near the front of it. Uh, but that's a good black. And yellow seems to be struggling. Yeah, so yellow's a little short. So so black's nice. I uh, would think blue at red is the line, is the play here. But you want to try and... You obviously want red on the back line, but you probably want to try and cut it a little bit uh, to the left by hitting the right-hand side of the ball and see if you can get uh, a bit further away or get something in the block line. Uh, they're looking very closely at where it went out because there's a reasonable chance that uh, yellow could be in play between red and black. My feeling is, although we can't tell from here that it's not, but... Oh, no, he's hit black comfortably. So Barry is a big momentum player, and, and in the last game there was a lot of funky stuff going on and not much momentum, and this, he's got a roll, roll on here. Two nice hoops and a nice clearance. Well, so black shot at yellow, and you know, missed. That's what happens sometimes. You miss from long distances, but just nudged his own ball, uh, which is in a distance behind there, back to the boundary, and yellow runs. Three zero. So after uh, that funky first game, that looks like they've decided that you know lunch is more important than anything else. <laughs> Three hoops and we haven't had one stuck in it. No. Last time we yep. stuck in it, stuck in it, stuck in it. That's a very nice blue. Yeah, Red looks a little disappointed with his shot, but it's not probably as good as he would have liked, but it's okay. And Black has resurrected some stuff from the last game by styming blue shot at the hoop. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about this. Uh, and we're, yeah, that's just more like the pattern. This is much more, much more appealing. So. <laughs> well, what it does do is it gives a, a really good chance of blue to get rid of both red and yellow here, though. Yep, and does that quite nicely. The downside to that shot, though, if, is that uh, yellow is live at the wrong side of five, but near five. So uh, red's just going to come back and put some pressure on to make black make the hoop, I guess. So, uh, so that the good yellow for him is in play. Black does make it. Gets him on the board. 3-1 to Barry. Barry just taps in front of five. So they are on a on the quick um, the quick trip into lunch here. So this, this is an interesting one. So uh, you've got the usual three options here. Position hit with black, hit now, or soft clear. So He's gone the soft clear, which has ended up being position, uh, except that he's also probably blocked black at yellow. And red's going to put itself on the same line just to make things more interesting. So I'm, I'm thinking 
that if Black hits yellow, that's a pretty damn good shot. And when he does hit yellow, if he does, he's going to hit it left to centre, which is going to send yellow towards the hoop. Yes. Yeah, and which he did. Well done. Hit blue. Hit Cannon's yellow out. Black's out of the picture for a while. And yellow will, of course, dispatch blue. But you've bought yourself a little bit of time. Oh, well, that's a bit of a lazy shot there, though. Uh, so cleared blue and cleared himself in the process. So now if blue uh, dispatches red, then it's no oh, hang on. Okay, so so blue ignores red and um, takes a position not dissimilar to red on the other side. But uh, we've seen Barry run a few of these. So there's nothing to suggest he won't at least have a crack and probably will run, and he does. Okay, so uh, four one. But black is uh, legal down there. Came off the. Oh, actually, no, it came off blue, so it's not legal, yeah, because it moved yellow in the shot, but it didn't actually hit yellow. So uh, he's he's done a bit of a con job there, and then failed to put it in front of the hoop. So black appears to be past the hoop, blue is good. Yellow is short, and red is just going to come down. Oh, he's stuck in behind blue. That's very good. That that is very good. That's going to stop black from hitting red. Phone's going off all over the place here. I always think it's mine. Okay, black just taps to the front of the hoop. So I think yellow probably clears blue, and eh, it's not bad. And red is going to look to jump black if blue doesn't impact it. Oh, that's sprayed that one. Shane has a very stop shotty action, which is not being disrespectful, I hope, but not, not a particularly repeatable swing. So he tends to just throw out a big shank every now and then. And there's a nice jump. So 5 1. Getting a bit rowdy at the athletics. So uh, we've got black short. Yellow had gone off blue uh, legally over to the boundary near seven. So it's a seven yard tap in for um, yellow to the front of the hoop, which he's done. Blue looks again to be. Uh, very poor shot, well short of the hoop. And Barry should be able to put Red in and mount a lot of pressure here. So two runners, and Shane's got two that aren't impacting the hoop at the moment. So Shane's done um, what I guess would be predictable in that situation and that's put Black in a position where it's um, blocking both yellow and red of the hoop. Blue is wired from red I would suspect and now from yellow from where he's put it and um, based on the previous hoop red is jumping black so blue needs to stop that and can't. Yep. Yep. Red is jumping black. So he worked that ball movement very nicely there, Barry. Yep, easy. So 
the six one to Barry. Leaving Black in a position where it's got to come through the hoop to get down. And he's done a pretty good job of that. Between yellow. Barry also has a very stop shotty action, which you would wonder how he can repeat and repeat and repeat. But at the moment, he's on a roll, and that's a brilliant shot. Full pace, but just coming out, it's going to hit. Just Nick Yellow. Yeah. Probably not enough to stop Yellow being a runner. Black can hit Yellow or run hoop, obviously. So Red will be looking to impact the play. At 6 1 up, it's, uh, it's worth considering just pounding the blue away and deflecting your red up somewhere near there, but he's just gone straight for the block. Which he didn't get. Uh, may have partial blocked the hoop, but black's going to hit yellow. And now, looking at his uh, line of aim here, his, his mallet when he puts it down is hitting left of centre as I look at it. About there. Straight back in. <laughs> Blue is going back in. Oops, someone put a hoop there. Alright, so um, I think Red's going to run this and finish the game. I think you could be right. I'll wait to call a free shot. Yep. Yep, there it is. Good finish. Right, so we don't have any scheduled game on this lawn now. That's that's uh, two matches finished on this lawn in front of us. But the next round, which is the there's only one match in that round, is Malcolm versus Torben, and we've asked for that to be put on this lawn. Um, so we have another match to watch. Now we don't know when that's going to be. Malcolm has just finished a game against Chris on six. Um, I think that's the first game. Um, so we'll be waiting for at least at least one, possibly two more games up there. Torben just played Robert. Um, now Torben is sitting in the corner of Lawn 8, all on his own. Um, with nobody around, so we'll let, let's just assume that, given that he's sitting there and he hasn't come inside, that they have finished either one or two games, and they've got at least one, or possibly two more to go. So we could be on a delay of 45 minutes before there's action on this lawn in front of us. We could throw the camera onto another lawn. Uh, and do a bit of commentary on whatever we can make out from this distance. Um, just having a look around though to see what there is. We've got nothing on the lawn next to us. The lawn 1 is too far away. Lawn 2 is out of action. Lawn 4 is warming up. And that's the double banked lawn. There's already a game going there. Um, yeah, so there's nothing really happening right this second. We'll come back on in some time between 10 and 45 minutes, depending on what eventuates.
Okay, we're back on air. So Jamie's had the, the camera on Barry Hayden versus Phil Roach, which I think is probably a pretty important uh, match in the um, scheme of things in the second eights. Uh, so it's currently 5-3 to Barry. Game one. And Barry has a ball in a controlling position here in front of hoop nine. Phil coming in from distance has hit. Nice shot. Barry will just come back. Reads well up the boundary. <coughs> so Malcolm just beat um, Chris in two games up on Lawn 6, so Malcolm is one of the ones who will be coming on on 5 a bit later on against Torben. Torben's still playing Robert. We think game 2 after a, a long game 1. Things are moving along quite nicely. The chills out of the air, mostly. The athletics is not too disturbing. Plenty of PA noise, but I think we'll get by. Decent number of spectators here today with the weekend bonus. Thanks for the message from Greg Fletcher. Hmm? Oh, damn, I'm sure it middle of the night or something like that in Germany or whatever, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so a little bit of toing and froing. Barry's still got control of the hoop. He's got two balls in front now. Uh, red is partially blocked on black by blue. So this is one that uh, I'll be looking to hit blue onto black, I would expect. Tricky, but uh, all the balls are relatively close together, so it can be doable. fair chunk of blue and uh, never looked like hitting black. So uh, uh, Barry has a relatively easy hoop to go do 6-3 up and runs it and runs it well. Into a very nice position up there at the next hoop. <laughs> Just looked up onto the lawn four and seen Janine McCarty in what must be a brand new set of whites. Bloody hell, they're white. <laughs> Even the little legs poking out the bottom are white. So uh, yellow hasn't impacted black, blue has come in, not really impacting the play either, so it's it's all on red. You know, black's, black's hoop is not a gimme, but you think black has a reasonably good chance of making this hoop if red doesn't move it, and hasn't. <coughs> Sunglasses on the glare off of bloody Janine up there. Okay, Barry has uh, 
plunked the right hand upright, but uh, the hoop has been very forgiving and let his black ball through, so win that one 7-3. I'll just update that again. Yes, it was a very friendly hoop. <laughs> yeah, it hit. It's bounced out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's individual hoops, isn't it? You know, like um, Russell's just said, it maybe it's how it's been set. So the hoop setters have been quite diligent over the last couple of days and uh, Russell's just going out to do that that lawn reset them make them a bit more solid not a hundred percent sure I like the um, the tap tap over the top of the grub screws on the quadways I think maybe hitting them in the middle of the top would be better but Got uh, Peter Tracy here today. He's just coming out with his nice croquet referee vest on. So Jamie's been uh, co-opted as full-time camera person by the look of it because um, my ca my cameraman's gone up on the court too to have practice again, like he did the other day. It's good to have a professional camera person on though. Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, not much of a delay and we're getting ready to go again in game two. Yep, Barry's just been told he's got to fill the score sheet in so we can keep things up to date. Phil hitting off first, so I'll be hitting off with the red. So don't be alarmed at home that red's coming on first. <coughs> uh, loser starts in the second game, or best of three, or any game that you lose in the best of three or five. Yeah, you start the next one. And that's a good shot. There's a red right in front. And black seems to have matched that almost perfectly. There you go. Might even be in the backswing. Okay, yellow looks to be struggling a bit to get there. And hasn't got there. close to those balls just drifts past the front of the red. So uh, we are a long way away from uh, the action where we're sitting uh, but it does appear that red is well and truly stymied although red is coming in with some intent. I'm just having a look though to see whether we can get a shot away at the hoop that doesn't risk touching black in the swing. I was having another look. Doesn't seem to be too perturbed. And he's got it in the jaws. And that might have been about the best you could do I think so. <coughs> does give black the jump shot. And 
and he's done it but he's moved red this might need a referee to look and see whether red's through on red's through you think yeah okay so Phil Phil's looked at yeah okay so we seem to be we'll, we'll wait for official confirmation but we we think that black has just dragged red through enough that red scored the hoop <coughs> We'll just wait for, uh, fi well, by official confirmation, I mean uh, Phil or Barry putting a clip on there. The, the black went through, but we think the red has gone through as well, so red scores. But we're just waiting for someone to put a clip on there, just to make sure that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're a long way away, though. I know you've got young eyes, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, Phil is Phil is putting a clip on just to con so we can get officially confirm that Jamie is once again correct, and I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so Phil has hooped one game two. Okay, so we've got black up there, blue up there, red's gone past. Uh, hello, he's going to try it again. We've got yellow in the jaws. We're going to have to check. He wants someone to come and have a look at it, so this must be pretty close. And uh, even Jamie's young eyes can't tell what's happening with this one. Yeah. Well, you know, benefit of the doubt rules in the rule book now, so anyway, it gives the um, uh, referee something to do. Excuse my ignorance, but why did they start with the red ball instead of the blue? Uh, yeah, so, I'll leave that one. Phil lost the first game, so you know, in a multiple game match, the loser of the previous game starts. And so they keep the balls they used in the previous game. So he was red and yellow, so he just starts with red and yellow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, they've decided that one's not through, and uh, Barry's. Sounds complicated. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, Barry's had to go at the jump shot, and failed the jump shot this time. Now, the hoop did move when Blue hit it, and uh, I think Phil's having a look to see whether that made any difference. Hasn't got the referee involved. No difference made. Red's just going in front. Not quite sure why. He thinks black could get the yellow. Well, no, black can only get the yellow through. So um, Barry seems to be on a one-man mission to score all Phil's hoops in this game. And that's two peeled hoops. Two nil to Phil. It's a nice length with the yellow. <coughs> Let's see if Barry can find a way to get that one through for him. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, black's out there quarter, but it's a hell of a cut. So blue's come up short. Okay, red's a bit deep. Uh, senior Sergeant, I am not Hello. doing any commentating. You're not doing any commentating. The criticism that you gave me last time. Well, you know, so the cap fits. <laughs> and it wasn't me criticising you. I had messages from the the paying public saying, you know, make him speak up. What the 47 that were watching. Well, a lot of yeah. Well, this is true. Most people, most people watch afterwards. They don't watch at the time. Okay, so Phil's run hoop three quite steadily for a three nil lead. Yep, his first hoop, and it's well pointed out. The 
the blue coming down at speed. That's going straight past. And worse still, it's gone past by about a yard to a position where you would think that um, Phil will be able to put a ball or balls in where Blue won't be able to see them. I'm waiting for an insightful comment from Shane, but he's sticking to his guns and saying nothing. No. He's chewing on his knuckles, in fact, to keep himself from saying anything, which is quite quite good. <laughs> okay, Blake's also come in a bit... Well, it's stopped quite nicely there. That's pretty good. As somebody pointed out this morning on the, um, the chat, I'm just really just talking to myself, which is what I pretty much have to do because no one talks to me. <laughs> and I certainly don't listen to me. <laughs> okay, so blue could see yellow and it's bunted it back up towards the um, red and produced some sort of interesting stymie here where red needing to hit black has yellow and blue in between. <coughs> we'll have a good look at this. Right, I'm feeling something outrageous coming on like red red tries to um, promote yellow through the hoop because that's all it's got. Got a clear shot past the edge of yellow, you think? Yes? No? Well, I had a clear shot to uh, not where the hoop was, unfortunately. Looks disappointed, so he obviously thinks he could have got it past. Alright. And Black's staggered through that one to get on the board. Okay. I thought you weren't saying anything. <laughs> My eagle eye. Okay, right, so, so Shane's, that he nicked the Shane's eagle eye believes that as red went past the yellow, it just nicked it. So you'll have to play a slow mo. Yeah, yeah, well, we, we don't have a slow mo on here, so we'll have to just to watch watch tonight on YouTube and see what we can come up with. But you know. So blue has come across a little bit too wide. Yellow is reasonably well placed in front of the hoop. Black, having just taken through the hoop, probably can hit yellow, but red coming in looks like it's going to lay a block, and that's pretty good. He got a good shot out of his opponent, so. So black will just come in now, and that's probably not paced up enough. So it's a pretty much a free attempt to make the hoop for yellow here. <coughs> if you're going to lean on that table, just make sure your legs are um, locked in place. Because I'd hate to see you fall forward fall out through there, land on the the worst part would be you'd fall flat on your face at least twice and, and we would catch it on the camera as you went past. Yes, there are some people that would uh, enjoy watching a Victorian fall. A Victorian fall on their face. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so um, Yellow made the hoop for our 4 1 lead. Um, Blue has put a ball up to 6. Reasonably good. Yellow's just checked what sort of swing he's got and decided that he's got something, so red is just going to come up in front of the hoop and maybe pull off a mystery block, which he might have got by the look of it. Uh, black coming up as well. Drifting past 
This has not been the most sparkling game that Barry's played this weekend, but it is only the second game, I think, or we think, of the match, and he is game up. So. Okay, that's a pretty reasonable attempt. Get yellow up into the play and stymie the blue. So that's um, as much as Barry's not having his most sparkling game, Phil is producing some really good stuff here. Um, it is the second game. Thank you, Shane. That's why you used to be a detective, because you're all across stuff. Look, uh, I'll just uh, add the special comments. Right yeah, yeah, that's right, you do special comments. Good man. There on Lord Four. I mean, Brett's just fired a tracer bullet through a whole heap of balls. Well, that's a pretty good effort to get that much swing on blue. It's bounced out. And Red will presumably run the hoop for a 5 1 lead. Ball to seven by Barry's gone too far. It's not a runner, but it'll be it'll be defending the front of the hoop, uh, controlling the hoop. But Yellow sh should respond by going a bit deeper, and has. It's all very quiet on the uh, veranda now. Earlier today we had um, Team Jamie, Team Jamie's cheer squad here earlier, making clapping and carrying. They weren't loud enough, right? Okay. <laughs> well, you know, they tried. So uh, red's taking the shot at blue, missed, Got, went through the gap between blue and black. Black will defend blue's position by styming yellow. Or, yeah, ooh, well, um, hitting yellow to the back line doesn't just deny yellow a shot. So attempting to um, stymie yellow is much more powerful. But that may not have got there. Uh, yellow may have a shot at blue past black. Okay. And yellow did and has cleared blue. Um, so Robert and Torben have just finished over on line eight. So that means that everything is in place for Torben and Malcolm to play on line five uh, after Torben has suitably rested sounds like Torben's brought his own fan squad who uh, fan club over there at the back at the athletic and they've all just realized you might have lost and gone oh got blue back in front and now red coming in which is an interesting choice it's gone a tiny bit too long so black may choose if 
Yellow can't see blue. Oh no, he's going to take on the hoop. He's taken on the hoop and bounced out. But if blue can't get down to the next hoop, there might have been merit in black just positioning and letting uh, blue take care of red. Judging by what's going on with the movement of clips and that yellow's struggling to hit blue. No, wasn't struggling at all. It's taken blue out of the boundary. No, thanks. Thank you. When I have when I have drinks or food that, that you've brought me, Shane, I get someone to taste test it for me just in case. <laughs> okay, so blue made the hoop. Yep. And red's coming down to the next hoop. Start of a big comeback, perhaps. It's a nice red. Uh, yeah, black's pretty good. It's quite close, angly, but you know, can get in there. Yellow is coming in at a reasonable clip. It's going to pull up short. Oh, and right, well, right next to red, but not hampering red. Mm. Barry's calling a referee because his uh, swing at blue is a little bit hampered. Plenty of blue, but he hit it too hard and too wide. It may have been the only direction which he could get it out at. And uh, Red has a look at the hoop to win the game. No, not win the game. What am I talking about? Not, it's 5 2, isn't it? Yeah, it's 5 2. Sorry. <laughs> So looking at looking at the loop for a six two lead. Oh, failed it anyway. Change change glasses so I can read the screen in front of me. Yeah, Barry's positioned in front, very tight in. You know, he's having a good look. black and it doesn't hang around so red was controlling whatever went on so blues decided to take red away So blue cleared red and held a reasonable position but not in front of the hoop. So red's come back very deep. Uh, black's come in between, nice and close. All the yellow's down in the corner but it's just a little bit of movement on the lawn next door between some of the players from there just waiting for them. He's now hit yellow in. Uh, blue is going to clear red to protect the black. And send the balls that out to the boundary.
Much more spectator traffic today with uh, being the weekend than there has been over the last few days. And that's a great shot by Red, clearing black and kind of hanging around. So we've got a lot more noise here around us and a lot more people trooping in and out, a lot more people asking questions. It adds to the atmosphere, but it can get a bit distracting. So black has come back in. Nicely. Yep. The spectators all troop out the door past us, now they're all going back inside again. Yellow has attempted to run the hoop and has didn't get any spin or anything on that, just stopped dead inside the jaws, so it's not uh, a horrible position to be. Uh, black is in a very deep jumping position and blue is clearing red to protect black's position. Karen must come back to find out he's been usurped his job. Oh, Red's, Red's done a good job of coming back in and hitting Black away. So uh, one would expect that uh, Black is not jumping yellow now. It's just going to go off to halfway. Phil's giving us a good look before he does. What's that? Can <laughs> get a windy. <laughs> okay. Golf, that's a stroke. So that's, um, yes, golf, golf. So that's 6 2 to Phil. Oh, that's very nice. So, blue to 9. Very good shot. not shooting, it's just coming in from distance. So he's looking a bit disappointed that the ball didn't get up. Uh, Black's come in as a second runner, which is pretty good. And now Yellow will presumably f have a long shot at Blue. About 14 yards, maybe a slightly bit less. Just misses to the right. So Barry's looking at his options. I think probably Jaws in blue is probably the strongest option for me. Yep, 
And that's what he's decided and that's what he's done. Yeah, Black would be a little bit stymied to get up to the next two if he'd run that one through a yard or two. Phil likes to have a, a bit of a theatrical good look at these. Uh, it's not going to come out. Uh, so you're jumping that or you're um, hitting black and makes not much, not a lot of point in hitting black somewhere out near yellow though. So he's going to stymie uh, Blue's line up to the next two. Yeah. Barry may well try and peel this. And does. Six three to Phil. He's just having a bit of a drinks break. So it was an interesting but probably a reasonably good decision for black to peel blue there because um red having come in and tried to stymie the line has actually given itself a very difficult backswing. But that's a very nice yellow to get a bit of pressure on. Blue from where it was peeled to is now taking on the hoop and unfortunately fails to the left. So I think I think the smart money for me here is on red styming black where we stand, but that's not what he's looking at. He's looking very much like he's hitting red up to join yellow. It's a steady shot, but not that close to the hoop. It's not blocking anything. close and it's just going to run out of steam but right in front so yellow could take on the hoop for the win or it could uh, clear black relatively simply maybe try and in off something like that Plenty of options. Oh, it's black, possibly on the wrong side of centre, but that doesn't really matter, I guess. Oh, blue coming back in. Probably pump blue back out again. Yep. It's a reasonable chance that um, yellow might tidy red up a little bit. Just position yellow and let yeah, yellow shot. can't yellow can't hit black anyway. So yellow could promote red to a better position, or yellow could pull probably more sensibly just go in front of the hoop and let red take care of black. Oh, that's a bit light though. Um, okay, it was a little casual I think with the positioning of yellow. Blue's going hard at red, missing. Uh, red's deciding to take on the hoop to finish the game. And does. So 
Game all. Okay, so Torben and Malcolm are going to be coming on on court five, uh, just warming up at the moment. Torben's only warming up with one ball, so it must already be warm. He just played Robert. 
Malcolm just played Chris. So if Malcolm gets up in this match, then there'll be a three-way tie, I think, for a second in the block behind Robert. We'll come back to that shortly. On court um, three, the deciding game between Barry and Phil is going on. We'll, we'll be doing court five, but we'll keep you updated with what's happening on three because that looks like that will be pretty close to the de facto final of the second eights. Microphone's on. Okay, so Torben's won the toss. First ball's coming on. I probably should um, update the the names because we've switched over to this one.
So Torben's put a good blue in. In, in front, Angley, yard back. Reds come in behind that a little bit. Pretty standard sort of start we've had in a lot of games here. The blacks come in quite nice. Dead in front, about a yard and a bit back. Yellow's coming in a little hot, but they are pulling up quite quick. And he's bunted blue forward a little, making blue's theoretical hoop run a little bit better, but yellow, of course, may be in the backswing now. Or well, certainly in the stance, so... Although Torben does stand quite a way back and swings out. So. No, he's, he has clouted that. Now it's come straight back at him. So, so Malcolm will take the black out, presumably hang around in front of the hoop. He does. It's good work by Torben there to kick the pipe and move the black ball. And now fall over the pipe as well. Plays the black back into a, a hoop running position nearer the boundary. The yellow's cleared the blue gently and stayed on its line so it hasn't flicked across to be wide from blue. Blue's going to take the red as it should. Oh, misses. It got on <gasps> from the crowd. Uh, Red will take this on. Oh, quite a nice breeze getting up here all of a sudden. Oh. Oh, yep, and he's bullied that through. Yes. First hoop to Malcolm. Torben's black is a deep, good distance, but it's faded away down the slope to the right. And what's happened here? Got a referee coming out. Why is there a referee coming out? Oh, because the yellow ball was moved somehow. What was that all about? So yellow is now promoting the red to a position where it will clear black easier but not much more than that. And blue is coming down a nice length to the hoop, very nice length to the hoop. Certainly does that. Uh, goes to the boundary himself. So clearly not too worried about Torben putting black back and yellow having to do something from twenty, oh, my bit less than twenty yards away. Torben's in no hurry. Okay, so he's put black in to a very nice position in front of the hoop. Hasn't blocked Blue's hoop run, so uh, but he's taken out uh, Wild Yellow at the running the hoop shot. So Yellow is going to come in, but look at it. Uh, I would ex 
suspect that blue will either run hoop or uh, will take out yellow, but no, it's hard to tell here. Well, no, blue's running hoop. Yeah. Yeah, he's clunked into the left hand upright and bounced out. Malcolm's been rocaying very well the last couple of days and um, when he has made errors it's been uh, in positioning or in hoop running apparently from what I've been told um, rather than in rocaying no, and he said that one so I just told him just a little bit mixed up here with the balls and the other game on the boundary In that other game, it looks like um, Barry is 2 0 up against Phil. Torben's missed. Uh, Torben's a, a momentum player, and when his momentum's down, he struggles to get back into the game. So he may already be in a little bit of trouble here. Well, Yellow's gone hard at the hoop and bounced out. He bounced out to a reasonably good position though to defend the loop. So Blue really just can't sit in front. So Blue's either got to uh, maintain the wiring, which by his reaction he hasn't. Or he could perhaps have hit yellow. But so red coming in as a deeper runner. Black a long way away. Might as well just throw the black in and see what you get. Well, Shane Downey was no help to me, so you could you could have a go if you want. Okay, so black is uh, quite short. Oh, it's all right. There's some spectacular spectator movement here to the side of me. We're kicking tables over and everything. I was cheering earlier. Yeah. Okay, so yellow is just patted a little bit further forward. Blue is quite, it's quite hard to tell from where we're sitting whether blue and yellow are white, but judging by the reaction of yellow and blue, they probably were. So blue's just covered red shot at the hoop. Black, if black can't see yellow, there's a little bit of merit in just positioning red, but he's, oh, he's gone the jump shot, and that is an absolute cracker of a jump shot. That's a 2-0 lead. A smattering of applause from the crowd over in the marquee to our right. Torben's uh, black to three is very nice. Malcolm's going to try and hit that. Mm. Nope. Missed to the left. Uh, to the right. Sorry. Coming in with the pace off, and it's struggling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's struggling to get there. It's a nice block, I think, on red or black. He yeah, looks, he looks disappointed. Yeah, sorry. Not quite sure say. why. Unless he felt he needed to bump black up a little bit, and he didn't get that. Red will certainly be shooting at that target. Oh, 
Oops. He was missed again to the right. Okay, so Torben has not looked convincing at the hoops so far in the game. He's bounced out of most of them. So let's see if he can get his act together here. Lots of swings. Yep. Two one to Malcolm. It's a nice yellow down to four. Better blue. Yeah, it's a good blue. So we're looking to position red down somewhere near blue, not not stymieing yellow shot at it, and then yellow takes out blue. And that's one way of doing it. We just nudge blue forward a bit and get pretty much the exact right result we wanted. So black is taking yellow. And hits, nice shot. Nice pose for the camera from Torben there. Torben's got a nice pose for going on for the camera and you're not even including him in it. Coming in takes out the blue. Very nice shot. Uh, Torben couldn't do much more there. It's just uh, Malcolm is a, a good shot who's in pretty good shooting form. So red now being the runner. Blue needs to do something about that. He got his head down and he's nowhere near it. Muscles through for a three one lead. Okay, so Torben's going over to five, and that's not great. That's short. Yellow is going immediately deep. come in and manage to get itself onto the leg of five. Yeah, red has come up to a position where if blue was still there and the next rotation then it could possibly go in off. Assuming it was this still there as well. Uh, black of course has a chance to do something about that first. And blue looks like it might be struggling to hit red there. Well, no, blue seems to be on the leg, or well, skewed a little bit by the leg at in its shot at red. I'm just gonna have another look at it. Yeah, well, black, black hits red. Black hits blue and see if he can bounce it out a little bit onto the into a better position or where it can hit red. But you know yellow's the wild card. Yellow is a oh. sort of a runner. Mm. Quite sure what he's 
done there, Black. Trying to stop uh, Yellow shooting at the hoop because Blue's not covering much of the hoop, maybe. Okay, so Malcolm takes out the black. So Torben is now looking at it like blue can't hit red. And just positions a little bit behind it. And I think red's just going to bump that out. Yep. But when Torben's in form and playing well, he's a, he's a good shot and blue would hit red normally so you need a good black and that's not a good black it's short and wide so it's just not generating enough hoop pressure here on Malcolm but yellow's just come into position it may have blocked red at black but he probably doesn't care about that because red can shoot hoop before that or it'll be hit by blue Oh, well, that couldn't have got much worse. He's nicked, nicked red, and that's deflected blue into black and cleared his own partner ball. So he's not having the luck of the Danish here, is he? Okay, so red just... Um, Takes a better hoop running position, presumably wide from black. Oh, black's missed. So, so uh, Torben's running a bit rough here. Assuming that blue's been correctly placed on the boundary over there, yellow's just having a look to see what line it's got at red. And looks like it's going to run the hoop anyway. Or maybe he'll position closer. And he's going pace off, looking for jaws. He's just staggered through. So 4-1. Uh, yellow can get down to the next hoop easy enough. Red is probably forcing itself to have to go out wide or run the hoop and promote yellow. Uh, but blue has not put any pressure on by being short again. Oh. And um, oh dear. they couldn't have got much worse. So caught a lot of hoop and just, just <laughs> stymied himself completely. No, I don't oh, think so. you, you can't tell from here whether they're touching or not. Um, I don't think they are, but it doesn't exactly matter. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what really matters is a good black, and he hasn't got a good black. Uh, so black and blue are not great, but the upside is blue can promote black. No, it's yellow. So yellow just clears out the way, and blue presumably will promote black to the front of the hoop now. Um, Red will have a hoop to hoop line. Oh no, he's not. Oh. Gee. Okay, so. Red's got a shot down and it's got a hoop to hoop line, so if it can. If it's got anything to get a little bit left of the peg, you can turn this around as it goes down. And he's done that. So, Torben needs to deal with that. Yeah, I think he missed a trick by not promoting black. Really. So, 
So Torben's 4-1 down. He needs to start making some inroads here. And this is a chance to clear red and flick off to hoop 7. And he hasn't done that. Malcolm's been rokaying well, so uh, a reasonable chance that uh, yellow will be back in itself to hit blue here. It's a good line. Dismissed uh, to the right, which is uh, the side all the balls are swinging to on this lawn. And blue runs. So four two. So red playing in. Four two. That's gone quite deep. But that's fine. Now if Malcolm's happy running the hoop from there, black needs to do something about red. Because yellow may well stymie blue over on the boundary. No, not looking at it. He's looking at bringing yellow in. So, yellow short. So blue to okay red. Yep, that's better. Um, over on court three, I think uh, Phil is getting a flogging from Barry. It's either four one, it's either yeah, yep. four one. I guess it's either four one or five nil, but it's four one apparently. Okay, Malcolm's red is it black? Nice shot. Now Malcolm's got potential hoop shot there with yellow, quite angly, but he's capable of running that. So black needs to impact the yellow and does. Nice shot. So it's a little bit better quality at this hoop from Torben. No, no. No. Yellow back again. Black is open on yellow but only just. That's all right. So just red just coming in, looking to bunt yellow to the wide spot, and just missed. Get a good look at Torben's swing from behind here. Oh, okay. Wasn't a great swing. And he's just nicked yellow into a slightly better running position. Oh, yellow's choosing to uh, remove the blue. Need to read as the runner. Blue needs to hit red. Yep, nice shot. Okay, now what's interesting here is he's put red, he's cleared red to right next to black, and if yellow's a runner, then you can expect red to tap this across a few inches and, and block black's shot at yellow in the hoop. 
but he's not looking at it. He's looking at coming in. Pace off. Yeah. It won't hold on this lawn. It'll drift to where it's drifted to. Yeah. And if Torben's going to take on the hoop, he needs to remember that. He needs to aim, as we look at it, left of the hoop to bring the ball back. Yeah, that's right. We'll hit it hard enough that it doesn't matter, yes. He has. Great shot. Oh, this is going to go what close to the next loop as oh. well. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Did it go through? No, no. No. So. 4 3 to Malcolm. But uh, black, unfortunately, is going to end in a, has ended in a spot where yellow can stop wide. No, it hasn't. I think he's conceding. <coughs> okay, so blue coming down. Again, if you're trying to hit yellow, you can't shoot at yellow here. You've got to shoot left of yellow and bring it back on the lawn. Malcolm's approach is nice. It's going to curl just a bit. Where's black? Oh, there. So black at yellow is the play here. And as Jamie said before, hit it hard enough to keep it straight, or you have to allow for a little bit of left right. Five one now. Here. Down. Peels down. Yep. So he caught, got the ball all right, but hit right of centre, which is probably to be expected there. Okay, so Malcolm appears to be rocking blue away here. Hits centre ball, very nice, and. As an added bonus, gets yellow across past halfway towards the next two. Should should blue miss and red run. And blue may well be wide from red on that angle. Where's those young eyes, Jamie? You're supposed to be telling me that whether blue and red are wide or not. Doesn't doesn't look like it the way Torben's walking. Okay, so that's a miss. Okay, so red's rejected. And back to a position where it's not going to make it next time either. Now if Torben's trying to hit red, he's got to aim again left of red to bring it back around. And if he shoots at red from there, he may well run the hoop. Oh, and he hasn't got enough pace. Thank you. No. The yellow's blocking, blocking black at hoop. Misses. 100% sure it needed to move red, other than the fact that red was going to hit black next, because uh, red is not a runner. So, options red could jaws It'd be tough to do that, more than likely do this red hitting black. I'm 
yep, just centre balled that away. He peeled black. So on the other lawn, lawn three, uh, Barry is well in control of the game. Was five one up. I think it might be five two, and then put a good ball in front of eight, and Phil has shot at it, hit it centre ball, and peeled it through. So Barry gets the loop for a six two lead, and gets to be first to the next loop as well, and that's a good ball across. So black coming back. The lawn's got that. Oh. <laughs> that one through. So that's a 5-3 lead to Malcolm. Okay, so uh, over on Lawn 3, where all the local interest is, um, Barry has now put a really good runner in, uh, just in front of the hoop. Uh, with blue likely to clear red, so Phil needs to hit a 16 yardo with yellow at black, otherwise the game's probably going to be over very shortly. Torben's blue is long. Malcolm's red is pretty good. Phil's missed on the other lawn. Okay, so Torben's coming in on that tight line that we've seen all day where the ball just stops dead when it gets to about where it's stopped now. Nice. So going back to Phil and Barry just for a second. So as predicted, Barry has clubbed the red to the other side of the lawn. And Phil now has a 21 plus a bit of angle. Let's say 23 yard roke, uh, which if he misses will probably be the end of the match. Red's missed for Phil over there, and Malcolm's red. It's coming in quite nicely, so he's got two runners in. <laughs> okay, Barry's run the hoop on the on lawn three, and has won that match. Torben playing black clears yellow. Okay, Malcolm's brought yellow in and got him very tight to black. And so Torben's playing blue from the boundary in front at the double of red and hoop and hits the left hand upright of the hoop and bounces out. Smart money would be on Malcolm running this one and he does for a 6-3 lead. And that probably leaves um, Torben stymied because he's got yellow in his backswing. And I think he may have deemed the black to leave Malcolm stymied. So Malcolm looks like he's going to attempt to roke the blue uh, and maybe wick off towards the next two. He didn't. He rocated the blue and pretty much stayed. Oh, 
Well done, Barry. So Torben coming in with blue to hoop 10 is well long. It's not generating a whole lot of pressure there. Uh, he can defend the hoop, but he can't really score. And he's keeping, he keeps putting a lot of pressure on himself here. The red may just come in front and may choose to hang back. And yeah, hang back and be a little bit left of the hoop as well to make uh, blue's shot longer. Black will just come down, but he's got to remember that the ball will swing away to the right. And it's done a reasonably good job of that. Uh, yellow coming in has the same issue, and he's also done a reasonably good job. So, lots of options for blue. Yeah. Ordinarily you hit the ball that plays next, but, but that's a long way away. So it looks like he's going to take out the yellow, which would be fairly sensible. But he needs to hold blue somewhere handy, okay, and he hasn't. And red now has a, the option of clearing black or running the hoop for the win. Looks like he's running the hoop. And it rejects. Torben runs the hoop. And Malcolm's hit to a uh, deeper running position, sort of defending the hoop a bit. Torben's tried to come in close and has done a pretty good job of that, except hasn't blocked yellow shot at the hoop. Red coming in maybe a little heavy, but it's pulling up sharply, and that's probably good enough. And now Torben is going to take the aggressive Roko black on yellow. And he's hit, but not enough, probably. Malcolm taking presumably yellow at blue with a bit of a, a wild outside chance of an in off but more than likely red is the runner so he's hit blue it did deflect towards the hoop but it got a lot of air time went up in the air and it's run down towards the next hoop So one would think blue needs to hit red here, otherwise red will run and game one will be over. Oh, that's a great shot. He centre balled that. That's very nice. So let's put a lot of distance on red back to the hoop. Blue's deflected away to uh, six yards away. So I think Red's just coming in. He's got a little bit of pace on. Uh, it's a tiny bit long, but it's probably still all right. Black will come, presumably coming in as a runner. And that's pretty good. Again, maybe a bit angry. No, yellow may just come in, or it may actually come in through the line of red and see if he can bunt red to where blue can't see it through black. Nope, it's crashed into the leg on the non-playing side and stayed there. So blue 
looking to clear red. And does. So yellow's doing nothing about black, so red has got to think about whether it needs to and whether it has to do something about it. just freed, it, freed itself up as best it could. just coming in has left that a bit light. Um, stymied up the yellow from running the hoop possibly so black may feel it doesn't need to clear yellow now. Might try to George. Oh. Red's missed it. Torben's not normally a jaw though, Torben's a... I'll smack this through behind the guy. Uh, but he's um, he's tried to smack it through and got the jaws, so that actually might be a really good result. But, uh, very difficult for Malcolm to do anything about that from there. It's not going to be jumpable, I would think. Well, he's going to have a go though. thinking is there any merit in flicking off blue live to hoop 12 and trying to foul black up with blue somehow but anyway kicked black out a tiny bit so, that probably helps red shot at black by having kicked black out a little bit but blue should be able to block this no he's not happy so he's hung that a little short Still have to be a pretty good shot here for Red to um, get the black away. Yeah, he's hit the blue, so he did get the um, the block. But Red has also gone live down towards 12. Torben doesn't bother with that, just runs the hoop.
Six five to Malcolm. Now a good yellow means that red is likely to clear black. So blue needs to do something here. And he's got a lot of weight on that. So blue hasn't really done anything gone too far. Yeah, and fairly predictable. Jamie, you drink something, don't you? What am I, chopped liver? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, was she? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, good clearance by red on black. So, uh, black needs to hit yellow, I think. Well, we pace off, though. Anything could happen, anything could happen on the slope here. That's, that's doing nothing. So neither blue nor black is in any threatening position, so yellow's just got a free shot at the hoop. Oh, but he's rejected. Probably not the end of the world just yet. Depends on if you can position blue where red can't see it through the peg maybe then there's a fair chance red can't see black through the peg and yellow he doesn't look happy about where he's put blue oh so he's gone the, well he's gone the double of blue and hoop and he's hit the hoop and rejected. So black will now crunch yellow to the far end of the lawn and hope to get some of the way up to 13 I would think. Yep. Might have liked a little more on yellow and a little more on black but so yellow has the same shot that red had but over about twice the distance. Double of blue and hoop. He's hit red. Okay, so that makes red and yellow's approach to 13 slightly more difficult, but Torben not happy that the hoop's loose and wants it tightened up, solid it up. No, we've got, no, we've got people running from all directions now with mallets. We've got, we've got uh, Chris coming from one direction, we've got Alison coming from another. And by the time Peter gets there it'll be done. Uh, I really need to read the uh, instructions for the quadway hoops though. Okay, so <coughs> should be a trivial hoop for blue. And it is. Mm, six all and we're off to thirteen. Malcolm will be first up, but it'll be first up from the boundary. And fairly straight. It looks a nice pace, but it'll turn right on the way up. Here it goes, yeah, but it's still a good result. So Torben's choice is blue, blue's on the boundary, so Torben's really got to hit this. And he has, well done. He looks unhappy with where black went off red, but I think he's he's done well. Yellow's taken no time to come down and has 
hit the same line that red went on and that's another good result no, I reckon blue might be wide from yellow yeah Another one of those what could possibly go wrong moments, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we'll send the blue out there and see what happens. It won't hold its line and it's got nowhere near it. Right, so red on black, yep, is the smart money, so we expect to see, uh, it doesn't really matter if he centre balls it, in fact he probably doesn't want a centre ball it, he probably wants a little bit left of centre to send black down to a wide spot, uh, and he has pretty much centre balled it. It's about a 13 yarder, black back at yellow to save the game. Nice swing, missed. Okay, so as the spectators behind me just said, this should do it, but uh, yeah, he has had a few rejected that he's over hit just a tiny bit and they've caught hoop legs. No, that one's good enough. First game to Malcolm. Turn the microphone off for a second. Got game two underway. Um, Blue has come on, Torben. In similar sort of position to previous game. Uh, red's a little deeper, sort of similar line. I vaguely remember that being the same in the previous game as well, roughly. So, Black coming in now. He's going to hit blue. No, just whisked past blue to a pretty good position. So yellow is not trying to hit. It's coming in lower and near red. Has hit red. So, I don't see why not. 
Okay, blue, very clever. Just done a nice little block. But they are very close together. And experienced AC player with a knowledge of angles from croquet strokes may be able to do a little cut brushy type thing here um, and propel the blue onto the black. Referee's going to mark them just in case. shot. Very nice. It's a nice little tap with black to obscure yellow at hoop I think. Had its hoop run taken out. I could just hit blue and possibly go in off here. Yeah. Let's just run the hoop anyway. So it didn't have its hoop run taken out. <laughs> so, great shot by Malcolm. Corbin's blue coming down looks to be coming too quick and swinging away to the right. So that's uh, not ideal. Yeah, if red's not a great shot, then uh, yellow will ignore blue and just come up. Uh, if red is a good shot, yellow would presumably destroy blue. Uh, red is quite short. Uh, Torben's forced to come down the right hand side of the hoop here which is not going to help when it slows down it will turn right out towards where blue is and there it goes <coughs> so yellow does ignore blue Blue presumably will now take yellow out and red will then take the long distance ping at the hoop. So 2-0 to Malcolm, which is uh, again how the first game started, and then Torben got Torben got hoop three, and this time his black is long. practice along. We've got um, Pete and <coughs> Robert down there doing a bit more practice. Very professional. Yes, and Pete, yeah. Very, very professional of them to be practicing. So yellow's gone deep. Could ask Jamie why Jamie's not down there practicing, but you know. <laughs> it's pretty good blue. Ah, that's right, you're filming, yeah. I've got I've got filming Phil on this side who could be doing it instead. And then you could be practicing. Yeah, okay, red's come in and gone too far past. 
black looking at um, taking out yellow. Hits. Black goes to the back line. So yellow presumably will shoot now at blue. The angles are sometimes deceptive on this line. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming yellow is shooting at blue, but he's coming in at an angle where it looks like he's shooting at the hoop. And he was, and he ran it. So I did. I did speak to Malcolm uh, during a, an event early, middle of last year, and he. He adopted an, an interesting line of play on that occasion and he said he was doing it because he'd won the first match so he had that buffer zone and he decided to do a little bit of practice in play. So that's a nice blue. Well, if he runs, I was going to say, if he runs that one, we'll know he's taking it very seriously. But um, so he's promoted yellow. So, based on previous evidence, yellow may well shoot the hoop from there. <coughs> Especially with both black and blue sitting so far back. Yep. see very well through all of the furniture here that that hit hoop leg bounced and spun around the other side yeah. 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 okay so um, Torben's now attempting to run with blue that appears to have missed the hoop and cleared yellow Crowd, the crowd wants him to have another <laughs> have another go. The crowd want run the hoop from out there, but no, he's he's going to clear black. Uh, got black and hung around the front of the hoop too, which is good. clear black down past hoop six but it actually deflected off live to five and nearly hit, <laughs> nearly went into the jaws which would have is a shame because blue uh, red rather wasn't a runner so blue wide of hoop four red's gone deep in front of the hoop black is coming back short but it's okay it's in there yellow is going to treat blue with complete disdain here and just sit in front of it so presumably the, this is bait blue is going to hit yellow and then red's going to attempt to run the hoop from where it is but he's not going to um, fall for that blue is going to hit red and he has Yeah. 
Oops. Sorry, red. Yeah. Coming back. No, that's got a lot on it. That's going for black, and he's hit black. Ah, that's a very nice shot. So, um, yellow is now the runner. Black has to do something about it. Torben's looking at it. Oh, wistfully, like red might be in the way. So it's a 4 0 lead. And um, if somebody just yelled out behind me, he's got a rush too. So Red, <laughs> Red could do a promotion where it's lying on yellow to hoop five. That's what we used to call an A grade rush when we were learning. It's a good blue. It's not a runner though. It's angled. Slowed down and curled to the side. Well, is red going to promote yellow? It looks like he is. He's looking very seriously at it. And has done it. Yep, that's a brilliant shot. Brilliant shot. Well, you just got to keep it. You just got to hang in there. When people play this well against you, you just got to enjoy the ride. You're a spectator yeah. the same as everybody yeah. else, yeah. you know. It's a good shot by Black. Oh, just clipped the hoop leg. Ruefully at the ground there. Okay, blue's just patted into a hoop running position. So red uh, will presumably deal with blue. So then black will be faced with a, a fairly decent. Keep running shot. That's a nice ball. Santa ball. So black is six yards, seven yards. Yeah, he's run up. Yep. So it's. Uh, Four one to Malcolm. Yellow oh, going down to position deep. Is he in Again, Torben's a bit long in mean, his ball coming in. Let's put us, there's a spot there for red to get into where black can't see it through blue, but that's not going to be where it is. So black having a go at red. No, promoting blue. Okay. Okay, so he's given Blue a shot, but um, he's po poked at it enough to say Yellow can see it. Well. Yeah, Yellow takes it out again. And Red is now the runner, so Blue needs to do something about that. It's <laughs> a, a good 12-yard shot, maybe a bit more. 
Warren's going to swing this right as we look at it. So he needs to aim left of red. No, no chance out there. Watch Malcolm here. He doesn't wait till the ball. No, she has. Red bullies that through. 5-1. Yellow is onside. They've had a short chat about blue and I presume they're just going to let blue where it is. Black's okay. It's not updating. Yeah, okay. So yellow's cleared black. Blue's coming back from the other end of the lawn. He's done as good a job as he probably could from there. Red's hit again. He's into hitting practice mode. <coughs> so Torben's now sitting further back so he doesn't get hit all the time. And if we're going to sit there, you might as well go on the line. Careful that you don't block all your options for black there. <laughs> uh, red may well move that anyway. I know red seems to be going out near black. So there might be a uh, blocking on the boundary attempt. And there's missed that. Presumably trying to hit yellow. If you want to hit yellow, then you've got well, or on the hoop. If you shoot at the hoop, you'll probably hit yellow. Oh, or you can get both. There you go. It's highly improbable looking in off. Yeah, well, there you go. So the good thing is you make the hoop, the bad thing is you promote yellow most of the way to the next hoop. Uh, but he hasn't read the lawn and uh, the yellow's curled to the right. So again, Torben needs to read the lawn and bring this around. He's not done a pretty good job of that, I think. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's coming around nice. Too much? No, fine. That's great. Drop straight into the wide spot from blue. So, Torben wants to hit red. He's got to go a little, aim a little left. That's pretty close. Oh. <coughs> okay, so blue, wide from red. Don't put yellow where blue can hit it on the red. Yeah, let's go out there. That's a good idea. Yep, I like that. That's a good place to put yellow. If blue hits yellow, it can't possibly hit red. If blue runs the hoop by an inch or so, yellow can clear blue. Good job of that. Very good job. But having yellow there um, allows him to just um, has, allows him to free red and blue up. If he 
it wants to, and then yellow takes the blue out. Or he can do what's he doing here? He's trying to hit blue out. Right. Yep, no, that's good. be able to see red needs to hit yellow. Just nicked it. Well, that's unfortunate. So that's why yellow was put on that side for all of this to happen yellow now hits blue. coming in from a very long way away is not going to get there. <laughs> no, way short. Uh, allows yellow to come in potentially wide from black. Can't tell from here but I'm going to guess that's pretty close. Open? Okay. The boss says it's open. Blue's coming in with a bit of speed. It's gonna f no, it's gone drifting past again. Uh, what we've seen previously, red will just die there, and that's what it's done. And just something about that patch of grass just there. It, all all the steam goes out of the balls. It slows down. Black has, well, if it was only just open, then he only just hit it. So yellow is going to have a shot here for the match. Yep, that's it. Game and match. So um, I'm going to guess that's the end of the live stream for today because there's nothing else happening. Yeah. So tomorrow uh, we're talking about a 9am start. Um, there's no carried over play and it's just the two rounds in both halves of the, or both blocks. So on today's form it should be a relatively quick finish. We have plenty of time if it's not. See you tomorrow.